All right, and we are live with the 17th episode of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose, slash Seth Okage. I'm joined today by Blaine and Mesa. How are the two of you doing? Tired. About the same. Obsessively playing a game we'll talk about later. Mesa, would you would you think that this is then called the Sleepy Cast Edition? Um uh no, because uh, I think that you know, everyone here is fundamentally a good person, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. I was going to be like, am I going to have to be the one to say yeah. that's already a thing? <laughs> and it's right. Yeah. Well, oh, no, okay. no, that was, that was really intentional. <laughs> okay. I mean, all right. All I'm saying is if you're connected to old new grounds, that's 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 not a good look. It's kind of a red flag. It's, I mean, especially if kind of, Bob seems like a nice guy. That's I mean, if, 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 if you're friends with Shad, that's that's bad hey, news. Hey, I didn't. Hey, I didn't say it's automatically a condemnation. I'm just saying it's a bad look. Look, I, I, I say the, I'm going to say I saying the word allegedly. Okay, I said it already. <laughs> um, if it, it's a bad look, also when you when you've been known to openly argue with a be a white man arguing with a black man on Twitter over your right to say the n-word with a soft a and him not get annoyed at you Mm -hmm. also bad luck to basically be friends or associates with John Tron so that Mm -hmm. that's also bad luck uh Okay, fuck, we got sidetracked <laughs> at the top of the show. I just want to go to remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe, whatever, on all the socials. On Twitch, we are live here at 6.30 p.m. PST. Uh, episodes later get put on to podcast services and YouTube with chopped up segments on YouTube for easier digestion. Uh, Twitter is the best place to keep up to date with all of us. You can find that our ads on screen as well as in the description down below. And I recently put up a Patreon with some benefits such as early access to our videos, which is typically two weeks in advance um so yeah i just want to go and shout out my two patrons at the moment which is uh ramen nomad and my buddy sly so thank you very much and with that let's go ahead and jump into what's what might actually be a long little segue on the show blaine give me your give me your good fellas thoughts because you did not oh, like my thoughts you. <laughs> uh, this it, is like it sensation is... around you in the pre-show because then you bring it up to put me on blast when i'm not ready for it no i i put it on here so that you can put me on blast uh, all i'm saying is they're so good why are they so angry i the good fellas <laughs> is a fucking great movie i enjoyed it but it's too long like i know it's only like two and a half so in, in the grand scheme of things like there's longer movies especially yeah. uh, scorsese's uh irishman which is like a whole hour longer than that yeah, but it, it, wrong. It, it, it feels bitch talk wait, jose it, it nah. feels too long like it, it's paced like a tv show but it's in cinematic format it's not paced like a tv okay okay hold like, on there, there, there's Number no one. like super huge overarching narrative there's no like a to b it's just like a series of events that, like yeah it helps flesh out the characters and the worlds but there it's is- not but it's about it's the life story of the one dude based on a mm-hmm. book that he wrote and yeah. it's all pretty straightforward it's like like i get what you're saying like it feels long but i mean are you telling me you actually were like looking at your watch or your phone or whatever being like oh when is this movie over like oh my god is it really no but it felt long but well, no what i'm saying is i'm not saying that's necessarily you, a bad thing well no, no no what i'm saying is were you consciously constantly aware of how long it was while you were watching it or did you at the end look at your watch and go oh fuck that was how long it was I was consciously aware of it. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to call you a liar, but I'm going to say fuck you. <laughs> I, I enjoyed my time very, very much with Goodfellas. Um, you should, at least you know. Well, it's because like, there's... I've said this before in other places. Like, I think there's things that haven't aged perfectly about it. Like, um, There's a few uh, N-bombs with the hard ER in there. Yeah, they're, Although, they're super fucking unnecessary. Yeah, and it's weird because it's like... It's that whole balance of, like, on one hand, it's believable for the scene because white Italians are really fucking racist. But, like... On yeah, there's the, the one hand, scene where they're complaining, like, you could, you're discriminating against Italians? What kind of fucked up shit is that? And literally the next scene, they're going off on that. No, literally. But, like, but on the other side, it's, like, you do. it's that whole thing of, do you really need to have white people saying that word in your movie? Also, it's a white director, so it's, like, you know, mm-hmm. it's awkward, to say nah. the least. Good movie though, a little bit yeah. long. Some might say too long. 
Mm-hmm. I think it's funny that that movie makes people be like, oh, yeah, the gangster life is so good when that whole movie what? is literally like, look how the gangster Whoa. life ruined this man's entire existence. <laughs> He got addicted to coke and had to move to a shitty a shithole in the town he doesn't know. Oh shit! Sorry. Spoilers. <laughs> I mean, what? It <laughs> On came like out twenty the, year it, old movie. I know it came out in the nineties. It's 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 thirty one years old now. God, you're it's a year older than me. <laughs> you're old. You're not even that much older than me. That means fuck. No, erase that. Ah, we're ah, young. Ah, no, no, no. We're live. It's on it. You, you can't edit it out of the YouTube post because I'll know. It's, I don't watch them, but I'll know. We are, we are young and beautiful. <laughs> All of us. Oh, man. We, we've gotten too sidetracked. Jose, what were you going to say? I must make someone to add anything else. Uh, so before we get into the rest of the news, um, both Blaine and Mesa have two um, news stories that are near and dear to them. Yeah. Um, so I'll just go ahead and defer to, uh, to, you, to you guys respectively on that. Mesa, do you want to go ahead and go first? Oh, okay. If, if you want me to go first, I can go first. Yeah. I, I, I leave it to the committee of the two other people. <laughs> I think Mesa should go first. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I'm talking about the Street Fighter Five update. So on Thursday, uh, Capcom had a winter update stream for Street Fighter V um, Champion Edition. Um, um, and so the, 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 where they showed off a couple things, um, they showed off, uh, the next new character, which is, who's Dan, Dan Hibiki, you know, famous joke character. Oh my um, God. I'm so glad. But he actually looks really, really good. Um, for those that don't uh, know, and I, I, I know, I think I know some of it. So is Dan a joke character because he actually sucks or because of like the way like he attacks is kind of like goofy. So, um, in the beginning, so originally he was supposed to be a joke character making fun of uh, SNK um, mm-hmm. because uh, there was a character. I'm blanking the name on of his name. Blanking the name, um, unfortunately, right now. Uh, that Dan looks near. Dan looks like the synthesis of two characters, um, and those characters in the SNK game basically have them the 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 traditional. Uh, Shoto move set, which is like um, you know Ryu. So it's a Hadoken, Tatsu, and then Shoryuken, right? Right. Um, so yeah, so the, so the, so the characters are supposed to be a fun, um, tongue in cheek, um, uh, uh, tongue at SNK. Um, throughout the games of the past, he's been a like a, just a bad character on purpose, mm-hmm. and you know we've gotten to the point where we realize that hey, that's just kind of a waste of time and money. <laughs> to make a bad character on purpose, so he still is a joke character, but he actually has utility. Um, so he looks really, really good. Um, they also showed off Rose. Uh, Rose is a character from the Alpha series. She's um, uh, she she's a she's she's a zoner. Um, the, the uh, uh, Justin Wong played her. Uh, quite a bit um, in, in Street Fighter 4. Um, they showed off a little bit about how she's going to play like in Street Fighter 5, but she is not ready yet. She's still, still a couple months away. And then they showed off a new Street Fighter 5 mechanic that literally completely changes the entire game five years in. Oh, shit. Like, like, fundamentally changes how this game is going to be played. So is this um, more... So uh, e- even with that, are they giving this patch like a big, like name to it, or is it just like a patch? It's just, it's, I mean, right, yeah, it's just season five. It's season five. This is the beginning of season five. Which, um, so there's two things about season five. Uh, season five was made. Because Street Fighter Five was doing well, better than they thought it would be doing right now, and they wanted to keep it going. And at the same time, they're still working on whatever the next Street Fighter is. And they still and they need more time to to, to, to to put into that. So um so um so yeah, we got Street Fighter Five season five. And so the so the new mechanics called V Shift. Um one of the biggest complaints about Street Fighter Five that the game that players have is that it's too offensive based. There's not enough defensive mechanics. Um and the, the V shift is a new defensive mechanic that the, 
that you know it's hard to it's hard for me to exactly talk about without going to specifics where I know the specifics yeah not really needed here um I'll just say that like like this feels like a mechanic that should have been brought in like after like season two or so Is like it- I, like I know, I'm probably going to butcher the description for you. Is it basically like another blocking system, like some kind of parry or sorta? Of. So it's a so what it is is an invincible backdash. That if you read if you read your character, then the character's attack correct. There is a slowdown which, in which you can retaliate. Okay. Um, so it's it, it's almost like a parry mechanic. Yeah, it's almost a parry. It's definitely almost a parry. It's spends um the meter it spends v meter which in street fighter 5 is used to activate v trigger which is the game's big comeback mechanic and um you know depending on who you are the big thing that 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 hurts that game um so you know it could we could potentially see a lot more usage of 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 this that means less usage of v triggers which would you know help the game quite a bit um well it's good to hear that it's it's uh shaking things up pretty substantially oh yeah this is like this is like this is like you grant i will we'll have to restart how i how you even just uh approach the game now like a complete restart how you approach the game it's it's it's, it's, it's pretty pretty incredible Nice. Yeah, it's going to rebalance a lot, I imagine. I don't play a mm-hmm. lot of Street Fighter. Um, I do want to get into mm-hmm. five at some point, but um, that that yeah, that sounds like a game changer for apps for sure. Mm-hmm. And the little and little bit of uh, um, updates to characters that we've seen. The characters look the, the everything that they've added to the characters looks fantastic. Exactly what a lot of those characters really really needed. Um. So it's yeah, it was just a fantastic update. Everyone's happy, which is that's, which that's rare. pretty rare that the game is yeah. happy. <laughs> it's really rare. Everyone's happy because what they what have, what they've shown of Rose looks really good. Dan looks really good, and of course the V shift mechanic. Um, uh, so the updates um, the twenty second, so Monday after next. Um, nice. Yeah, and. Um, uh, the, the the only thing the only thing that can make people even happier is if they um improve the the, the, the online net code a little bit better. Um, though it's still like it's currently of the AAA fighting games out right now. It's currently the, it's probably the best online, but it could be way better. Mm-hmm. Could be way better, and then uh, there's, there's certain they, pitfalls. Did they start using rollback for Street Fighter Five or no? Yeah, roll, uh, Street Fighter Five has rollback. However, it has okay. kind of has like bad rollback. Uh. But it's it, 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 they've improved over the, over time. If 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 the current netcode is what Street Fighter Five launched with, uh, I think overall cl- chanting of Street Fighter Five to have better online would have been pretty low actually it's not perfect like you know skull girls because yeah. um skull girls online is perfect not everybody I, not everybody's online can be the def- the defining online yeah like i had a f- like i played a game of skull girls with a friend from australia who's on a satellite internet and it was fine oh my god like skull girls is perfect i wonder how good the uh stadia version would be <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, that was the um, that was the five update. Everyone's really, really happy and excited for the future of this game, which is good. Nothing, nothing, a good thing. We should, nice. as a, as a podcast family, do a like a Skullgirls stream or something sometime. Hell yeah! Mm-hmm. Or something yeah, no like problem. I, I, I can I promise I will be horrible at it, but I am more than down. All right. <laughs> do Street Fighter so I can look really good. Yeah, sounds no. good. Well, it's, it's, I forget. Is Street Fighter Five like free to play now, like on this mm. level? No, oh. but <laughs> you know, like, but you can find it for like five dollars. Usually, it's like cheap, super cheap. Is that what's just like the base characters, or yeah, or what, what's and that model look like? And it's crossplay. 
Yeah. What is the model for that look anyway? Because from what I remember at launch was it was it was like a limited mm-hmm. character pool and then you had to buy other ones? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um so basically right now with Champion Edition, um they make it pretty easy now. Because you can buy the base game and then you can buy the champion edition update. Which just gives you everything. So it gives oh, okay. you four four seasons worth of characters, every nearly every stage, nearly every costume. Uh, nearly every song, which has a lot of it has a lot of music in it. It has a lot of Capcom music in it too. You can like um, you can switch character themes to like um, um, like the 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 battle theme from like um, uh, uh, Devil May Cry Four. You know, like the time has come, but so has I. Uh, um, I laugh last because you came to die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ed has a Nero costume. It's all it's all great. Nice. I want to. I want to. I want to beat up people as like good boy, as like good boy Cody, because now he's the mayor. I I, mm-hmm. I I know I'm talking like an update that happened what like five years ago now or some shit, but like it just makes <laughs> me smile. Oh, he's oh, great. Super he's tangent- really good too. Super tangentially related. Wasn't there like some fucking shithead uh, congresswoman? Um, that turns out like she was like cheating on her husband with some dude that looked like Zangief. I don't remember this. You know, you don't remember. Are you talking about, are you talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene? Yes, yes. Oh yeah, God, when she was a uh, when she was a um, CrossFit studio instructor, <laughs> she had <laughs> a husband. Wait, wait. Who, who just happened to look like fucking Zach Geef? It was perfect. <laughs> like haircut and everything. Yeah, the crazy, the crazy Q lady from Georgia. They lost her ability to be in communities. Like a few days ago, because she's a crazy Q lady person from Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, the one who the one who was spreading her anti-Semitic. Well, you see the Jewish space lasers calling mm-hmm. something and the something. Oh, mm-hmm. Man, I, like retracing those steps and like actually understanding what she means by that is like you are something special, aren't you? Here, I'm, I'm gonna I mean, paste the link you're a, just you're a, for you, boy. You think? Because you think I, you think I'd like stop being surprised, but while I'm not, while I, st- while I'm stop, while I do, I'm not no longer surprised by this shit. I'm still in horror of it every time mm-hmm. I fucking see it. I'm it's honestly like, surprised that they got enough votes uh, to, uh, to to kick her out of most um um to kick her out of the committees. Well, you see, she didn't start. She didn't start a possible insurrection. Uh, fueled by white nationalism, so we're nine, seven Republicans. If there's any, if there was any, <laughs> is there any sign to kill kill this filibuster? It's the Donald Trump vote. Fifty seven people out of, out of a hundred said convict him, and that's not enough in the Senate. It's almost like the system is broken. Well, actually, no. Like, it's almost like the system isn't made to actually do good by us. And like, I, I can understand. Wanting a, a, I guess, a supermajority, but there's a certain point where this type of thing just slows us down. So, if there's any, if there's anything for the Biden administration to be like, you know, yes, we're gonna kill a filibuster. This vote should have been it. Imagine the timeline where Bernie won. Uh, it, it would be identical to be fair right now right now it would well, yeah, be identical this situation would be identical the only yeah. difference would be that maybe bernie would then like actually try to push some legislature forward like not that he would have more control than biden you just you mm-hmm. see what i'm saying yeah oh, of course uh, over time it'll change but right now we're, we're not even a month into the presidency yet like using using the budget committee in order to pass a 1.9 trillion dollar stimulus it in a month, this is is I'm I'm no Biden fan, but I'm just happy. I'm just happy that's like, okay. It looks like they're actually trying things right now. Yeah, you know that's the first time in my life I've seen them actually try things. <laughs> anyway, uh, Blaine, anyway, you know, so Street Fighter Five. <laughs> <laughs> uh fucking zangief got it fucking rolling uh blaine you want to talk about the stardew valley uh patch fun fact i'm still on and off playing it while i'm talking because i just can't stop because it's so good so 
Um, Stardew Valley is a, for those of you who don't know, are is a farming sim in the vein of things like Harvest Moon, especially Harvest Moon 64. Um, and it's just an all around fun, sweet game. Matt Barone made the game by himself. Like, not like when people go, oh yeah, this, no, like he literally made the game by himself. The art, the music, assets, everything coding. Um, Jose and I were actually having a talk at the pre-show about, um, how it, you said in Jason Schreier's first book. Yeah, Jason Shire's book chapter. called um, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. He's a, like, each chapter is like kind of segmented to talk about the development of one game, and one is dedicated to uh, Stardew Valley and talking about, I, I don't remember the uh, the person's name, um, but just like everything he went through to go and make Matt it, how Brown. he worked at, yes, and um, yeah, just how he went and went through it. He didn't know necessarily know how to make art, how to do music, but he taught himself and he did it, and it's a hell of a fucking read. And I fully mm-hmm. endorse buying that book to uh, read it. Yeah, and like it, it, it is one of the most charming games I've ever played. I grew up on, and I promise uh, viewers at home, this is going somewhere. I grew up with Harvest Moon sixty four. It was like that was a game that like for the longest time I didn't play because my parent, my parents, my mom had a system of like, well, if you can't rent it, you know, it's probably not that good. So Blockbuster would carry it. So you know i don't know if you should get it and i said come on just let me try this one and i tried it and i realized that that was bullshit (laughs) and that quickly became this might be my favorite game on the n64 but i don't want to make a hard claim to that um but um stardew valley if i remember correctly was actually made by the creator as a response of like had to have everything that like he had wished was in Harvest Moon 64 but wasn't and everything that could be in a game like that and I mean it has just come such a long way from him being by himself making the whole thing to like I again I hope I'm not wrong about this but I believe he had put together a small team to like actually put some of the newer updates out more recently and this is a game that I feel like should be a model for every everything that considers itself like a like a service in any sense should look at something like this as the model. Like actually putting out like having the full complete game when it comes out and it being an amazing game. And then just for years and years consistently updating and expanding and adding and just just things that that both based on criticisms and also based on just Things that I don't think anybody could have even seen coming. Um, I haven't gotten to most of the content in this new update yet. I have only seen a few things. Like I know that there's a you can get like a cookout fire that lets you cook things without having a kitchen, and um, you can get. I know there's a new there's a new there's a new farm map called the Beach that was specifically designed for like veteran players to come back and kind of challenge themselves like. You can't use sprinklers except for on one small patch of land on the map. The rest of it is all sand, and you can still farm. You just you can't use sprinklers, so there's no automation for that, map, more or less. Um, the the you know there's a new op, there's quality of life improvements. How like you can actually decide do you want to have a farm where enemies spawn or not. It's not just locked to one special farm map that you would play as. Um, there's a new I know there's a new like. I believe it's called Ginger Island. Like, there's a new, whole new area that I haven't even looked into yet. That I don't even know when it unlocks because I'm on like middle of year one with a character and I haven't gotten any like letter about it or information or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, this is just I, I don't I I feel like I don't know what else to say without talking circles. Like, it's just it's a fun game. Is it, it never stops being fun? Is it? necessarily fair to call it like more stardew valley or just it just like with a like you said the quality of life improvements is that like really uplifted to be like oh yeah let, let's go ahead and do another playthrough dump another couple hundred hours in it's both um this this is a game that you could it's it it, it seems like there's there's stuff that's that's added on to the end of like like let's say you have a like um for those who did play harvest moon 64 that game has a beginning and, an, and a soft end, and then it goes on infinitely. Stardew Valley has kind of the same mechanic. So you have, uh, you find a letter from your deceased grandfather at his altar, and it says, you know, I will come back in, I think, summer of either the spring of year three or the summer of year three to, you know, see how you're doing. And Wait, that you're is, just, your deceased grandfather is going to come back and see you? Yes, he's a ghost. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> and... 
so like you know you, that's your whole like you do as much as you can by then you'll be kind of soft ranked but if you don't get like the best rating you can actually from that point forward every year at that same time the ghost will come back and see if you boost if you've gotten enough uh well uh, air quotes points it, there's a point system i don't want to get into but um to, to get that reward and get that ranking up um, but and there's stuff that comes after that. Like I, I want to say the Ginger Island thing is for people who have already done that, but I don't know. I really don't know. Um, then there was stuff like in the 1.4 update, which was when they added multiplayer and they added those other things. Like that was like they added festivals that didn't exist. Like there's a night market now in winter, where like for I think it's I believe it's three days out of the in one of the weeks in winter that you have all these shops open and there's like a you can go into a submarine and catch fish some of them which you can't get anywhere else um you have a person who sells art sells a different painting every week every day um you have like shops with rotating stocks and seasonal things that like maybe not otherwise wouldn't be available it, it's so interesting and this is stuff that keeps coming that keeps getting added with like every one of these big updates a lot in addition to quality of life stuff making you want to go back and be like maybe i should replay and see what it's like from the beginning which I do anyway because I'm kind of a crazy person. Mm -hmm. Mesa, have you played um, Stardew Valley at all? Um, personally, no. Um, <clears throat> I just it doesn't seem like a, a, my my kind of game. Um, um, the, you know, you know, I have tons of friends that absolutely adore it. So I, I, I know I definitely know the quality of the series. I think I'm basically in the same camp as you, where it doesn't it doesn't strike me as like my kind of. Um, game to play mm -hmm. but at the, at the same token i think i've it's basically the same argument i use for animal crossing where it either isn't something i'm interested in or i get into it and i know i'm going to be addicted for way too long and so many things in my life are going to fall by the wayside mm -hmm. it's but, i mean uh, that is that's the beauty of it too like even if it's not quite your thing it's not one of those games where there's like a, a high sword i'm looking for like a like not a threshold well, it's pretty cheap nowadays, too, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's $15 on the regular, and then they have sales all the time. Because I know um, Dez, my girlfriend, she she got, like, super heavy into Animal Crossing for a couple months. I think she only stopped playing, like, I think, like, maybe after Christmas. But um, maybe this will be up her alley. Maybe I'll go and get it for her. Yeah. I mean, it's it, if you're into... It's that whole thing where it's, like, it is an incredibly niche genre. It's the whole life sim, farm sim kind of thing. But even if that's not quite your thing, because of uh, price of entry, that's what I was saying. The price of entry is not super high, and on top of that, it's also just an easy game to pick up, like Animal Crossing. So you don't feel like you're really missing out if it doesn't quite click with you. The difference mm -hmm. being Animal Crossing is like a sixty dollar game, so you yeah, might so feel much. something if you <laughs> pick that up and don't click doesn't click with you. Yeah, that's that's way more of an investment up front. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So is that about cover it for that? Yeah, I I can't think of anything else to bring up with that. Um, it's a great game. I would buy it and support it. I'm literally, I have bought it twice. I'm probably gonna buy it a third time on a console I already because I want the collector's edition with the, with the guidebook. Nice. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into. Uh, I want to say my portion of the news, which is just all the other writers <laughs> here. <laughs> um, CG. Uh, yeah, can't talk. Uh, CD Projekt Red has released a public statement to Twitter on February 8th, stating that the company has fallen victim to successful hacking attack. The hacker group left a ransom note within CD Projekt's system, proclaiming that they have spread full copies of the source code for the uh, Perforce server for Cyberpunk 2077, Witcher 3, Gwent, and apparently some unreleased version of the Witcher 3. In addition to this, the hackers stated that they've gained access to documents relating to accounting, administration, legal, HR, investor relations, and more. Uh, CG Project stood firm that they will not negotiate with the group and they will not be paying any amount of uh, any ransom. And that to the extent of their knowledge that the personal data of their employees and customers have not been compromised. Um, the files in question have since been sold on the dark web with the upfront purchase price set at $7 million and bids starting at $1 million and moving up in half million in increments. Uh, to prove the validity of their uh, threats, the source code for Gwent has also been released to prove it. Um, IGN reports that multiple cybersecurity experts believe that the hacker group, uh, this, this is one word, uh, Hello Kitty <laughs> is behind <laughs> the attack. That's a uh, 
Hello, Hello Kitty is attacking uh, Cyberpunk, Again. and that this uh, data breach likely has nothing to do with gris- with uh, disgruntled gamers so much as an average instance of ransomware. So it's not like a mm-hmm. gamers rise up moment. It's just just happened to be a gaming company. Yeah, that that lines up with because um, I remember I I had had the moment it came out and I saw the ransom note. I had this brief moment of like I almost feel like this got to be bullshit just because of the way. The timing as well as the way the note read, but then actually after talking to some people, I number one, I realized, and that was just an inst- a lingering feeling that wasn't really something I should put too much stock in. And also having people explain to me, like, especially based on Polish law, or I believe it was either Polish law, yeah, Polish law, of how if they did fake something like that, the, the risk and damage it would do to them is so not worth whatever possible, like, non-gain they would do, and there's, like, nothing they can mm-hmm. for anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... But like the, the with what Jose just said, like it, then the way that note reads makes sense because they wanted to make it seem like it was a whole gamers rise up thing. When in reality, mm-hmm. I can actually mm-hmm. pull up the. Uh, I don't know if we want to read through the whole ransom. Oh God, note or whatever. no! I can't. I can't. <laughs> you got lulls pones. Yeah, yeah, it literally opens with that. <laughs> Y'all got honed. It says, uh, pwned. It, it, it's all misspelled shit to you. You've been epically pwned. We have dumped full copies of the source code. Uh, let's see. Any other- the only way it could be lamer is if it said all your source code all belong to us. <laughs> yeah. As long, yeah. If, if employee and customer data isn't part of this leak, then that's good. Um, um, you know, we don't want, uh, we, you know, leaks are leaks. It's, you know, how it's, uh, le- I mean, hacks are unfortunate and, but, um, as long, at least my opinion is as long as, you know, employee data doesn't leak, that's yeah. ultimately, ultimately for the best. We don't want another Capcom incident. Yeah. I that's know, uh, Derek from, about this. I know Derek from SGC you see it, his uh, thoughts on it was basically, um, cause there's, uh, there was an upswell of, uh, gamers rise up saying like rejoicing, like, yeah, fuck CD project. They fucked us. We'll fuck you. No. Um, so Derek went ahead and said like, he's not enjoying this trend. The shit isn't cute. It is. Mm-hmm. It's not leaks. And it puts employees, personal information out to the highest bidder. Uh, fortunately it, that's not the case where it's not people's personal mm-hmm. information, but still I, mm-hmm. I, uh, I know Blaine and I have given a fair amount of shit to CG project very fucking fairly, but um, going after the company in this way, I don't think is justified in basically any way. Yeah. Like, like, re- like, regardless, like, obviously, like, yeah, personal information, don't fucking do that shit. But even with this, it, it's a fucking video game. And, but e- even then, though, that's not like the highest of my fucking concerns when it comes to CDPR. But obviously, for the people, um, if, if this was like a big gamers rise up, let's go fuck with a company. Um, there's more important fucking things in life than video game, not as good as you thought it would be. As no, much as like, a transphobic bullshit that was going on. Well, like, and I wouldn't even, like, I, I kind of agree with Mesa. Like, if this was literally just like, oh, we we dumped mm-hmm. your source code. I mean, it would still suck that the source code yeah. was dumped because I feel bad for the people who had to work on it. But, like, I still would probably just be like, oh, that sucks, but whatever. I, mm-hmm. I, have, I have absolutely no fucking sympathy for any financial data or whatever that got leaked specifically for, of like, CD Projekt Red of its yo of mm-hmm. like the executives i really could give a shit less about them they're not going to be affected by them they're not going to they have their shit protected they have their shit safe um you don't get to be a fucking billionaire by not having your shit secure mm-hmm. um but i genuinely feel for the people who now are wondering like shit is my data somewhere out there and could be like i might mm-hmm. have an identity the theft and, and people I are going, paying for it and shit too people are paying yeah. for it am i am i at risk am i in danger is am i even being protected I mm. care about them. Yeah. I also am mad Absolutely. That, like someone like like a company like CD Projekt Red again. Like not to say that you all ever anticipate you ever expect something like this to happen, but at the same time, I don't. I think it's kind of fucked. It's like if I was in the position of the people that work for CD Projekt Red, I'd be like, how did they fucking? <clears throat> how mm-hmm. did they let this happen? Rather, <clears throat> where they yeah. don't have enough cybersecurity uh, steps in place to prevent something like yeah. this. Yeah. Or like they kept saying it was a something. It was like an actor, and I was like, did they mean that? Like they had a. They, they made it from what I remember from CD Projekt Red's um, statement. They made it almost sound like 
someone was like in was like in person for a job interview or something and managed to just steal a flash drive like that's it was so oddly put together that's mm-hmm. it. yeah the initial statement they put on twitter was oddly vague yeah yeah the way they put it, it says an unidentified actor gained unauthorized access to an internal network collected certain data belonging to cd project capital group blah 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 yeah, like what the fuck does and that then, mean yeah it's and like, <laughs> like, like it's not like a regular tweet like they attach an image with like full paragraphs or whatever so yeah. i guess i could have elaborated but I, I imagine like so much of this is like legally stuff too yeah that's, that's mm-hmm. also a definite possibility yeah but uh yeah hacks suck um fuck cd project for multiple reasons but this ain't it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just like I mean, how happy it's just how enjoyable that Nintendo hack was. Or it was just it was just information. And as far as I'm aware, there wasn't employee there wasn't any employee information part of it whatsoever. It was just, hey, look at this thing that we found. Hey, look at this thing that we found. Um and you know, you know You're talking about I'm, the, I'm uh, not advocating for hack hacking, but like You're talking about the uh, Giga Leak, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're just like uh, cute little nods, like oh, here's some art that we that yeah. we uh, hey, look, messed with like 30 Luigi. years ago. Turns out Luigi is in Mario 64. Isn't that fun? <laughs> hey, we, we got the original samples for the music in Mario Sun in my Mario uh, oh, yeah. Mario that's World. Also, like, that's also like leaking shit that like you would never see because yeah. because Nintendo. Like, it's that whole thing that Nintendo doesn't have an obligation to reveal it, but at the Absolutely. same time, it's like. It's games that they're not... I mean, they did sell Mario 64 again, actually, but, like, yeah. most of it is games that you're not going to see again, or you're not going to, like... It's, it's, it's just, like, in the greater, like, Nintendo vault. Like, that shit's never coming mm. out, so... Yeah. I and think then, it just, yeah. The Capcom leak directly after it with the, the employee data directly being part of it. No, literally. I'm, I remember yeah. getting a straightforward answer from someone. I don't recall what the answer is. I should have saved it. But I think it comes back to, like, why is the video games industry even so secretive about shit like this compared to stuff like the film industry, where they don't give a fuck. They're like, I don't know. We're, like, fiddling around with this script. It might come out in 12 years. We don't give a fuck. We'll just let you know. Yeah. But, um... Fuck. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was my train of thought. <laughs> it's all good. I never had one to begin with. Choo-choo. <laughs> uh, shit. Okay, let's move on to the next story then. Unless anyone else has any other closing thoughts. Oh, actually, no, I forgot one thing. Mesa, imagine a universe, if you will, parallel Mm -hmm. to our own, Mm -hmm. where at the very least, like like everything else about the game is exactly the way it is. Everything surrounding it, CD project, whatever. Mm -hmm. At least imagine a universe where Cyberpunk was actually a great game at the very fucking least. At, at least all this fucking controversy would be fucking worth something. <laughs> Instead, it's just such a fucking sloppy <laughs> turd fucking surrounded 6. by five out of ten. All this around, all of this about a, like, <laughs> all of this about like um, shoot, what, uh, what game? What's the name of that game again? Uh, it feel, yeah, it feels like all this conversations about that fucking Indiana Jones game for a Wii. Um. There was an Indiana Jones game for the Wii. Yes, Indiana yes. Jones and the it's a it's a mediocre game. Is my point? Just like it's just uh, okay. <laughs> all this controversy and energy about fucking nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if it was if it was something like phenomenal, it'd be like, hey, like yeah, there's this really shitty stuff going on about it. Like you can say this about like multiple pieces of art throughout the time that have had like problematic elements it's like yes we need to point this out whatever but mm-hmm. at the yep. end of the day at least the product is good but in this case it's just like yeah no it's, it's still a turd with t- extra turd on it i mean depends on some 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 youtubers that i guess like the taste of square enix dick it's apparently a really really good game <laughs> uh, i want to be I want to be actually uh, number one, allegedly, allegedly. Number two, um, I'm not call- I'm not calling out anybody who just genuinely enjoyed the game. I love trashy games, but like, I, I genuinely enjoy Vampire and that game's fucking. But um, I just am really tired with YouTubers that act as like it's weird. YouTubers that want to pretend like they're good video essayists and borderline journalists, but then don't actually have any ethical compass, and I'm just like, okay, so I don't need to care. Take what mm-hmm. you say seriously at all. 
Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to say who I'm talking to right now. No worries. Um, let's see. As a part of its uh, third quarter financial results, Ubisoft has announced that starting in March 2022, uh, the company will be shifting the focus of its business model away from AAA games. Uh, and this comes as a radical shift for the publisher who regularly releases uh, three to four AAA games per year. Uh, CFO Frederick Duguet, Dujua, whatever, <laughs> sees the uh, company pushing to a model in which they, uh, quote, have a combination of strong releases from AAA and strong back catalog dynamics, but also complementing our program of new releases with free to play and other premium experiences. Uh, Ubisoft CEO, Yves, I, I said this e name before. E Eves, Eves. E Eves, uh, Guillemot elaborated Guillemot. on the strategy. Guillemot. I thought. I thought I said it right the first. <laughs> like, wait, are you fucking with me now? <laughs> no, it was Eve's Gimo. Everyone knows it's Eve's Gimo. He's the Bond Eve's villain. Eve's <laughs> Elaborated on the new... Elaborate on the new strategy, uh, noting that existing games and service titles such as Rainbow Six Siege and The Division <clears> 2 <throat> will continue to play a heavier role in the company's future financial growth. Um, I'm kind of of two minds of this, where I think out of like the big corporation publishers, whatever, I think I would actually put Ubisoft higher up in terms of like the quality Absolutely. of their overall games. And like, I don't want to go like a fucking rise up gamers, but I feel like they respect their customers a little bit more, especially with uh you play mm -hmm. with the refunds yeah, and the way you can get. You, no, they do not. <laughs> but um, say, are we going to forget the, the year of 2020, well, I don't know, was it 2020 when all that nightmare shit came out about Ubisoft's management? I think when it all kind of started trickling out, I think it was like 2019. Okay. But, um, yeah, that, that that's just mm -hmm. fucked up. Yeah, of But course. in terms of, like, just, like, their output, I think their output's actually pretty good, even if I don't necessarily care for um stuff like the division or like even, like, the annualization, like, kind of bloating that they've done to franchises such as... um assassin's creed and watchdogs but at the end of the day they're still making uh top quality products that people swear by and they fucking sell so people like them um i want another That's rayman good. game for make another rayman game because <laughs> mm -hmm. legends is so fucking good um but yeah, I, I think it's interesting they push specifically on the games as a service stuff and I, as i've said i don't care about division two that's whatever looter shooter you want to call it but mm -hmm. the way that they've turned Siege around from its initial release, and I believe it was 2015, 2016, where it was just kind of like a sloppy turd over there. But they really, really freaking turn it around. It has a killer fan base. And uh, I would even say a very toxic fucking fan base, specifically on PC. But it's surprising how much money that they're able to make just off of like micro microtransactions off of that. It's not even just like the initial sales, people buying it on sale. Or anything like that. Um, I mean, I I don't buy microtransactions, but apparently a lot of people fucking do because they like um, not a I guess you get aesthetics. Um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Cosmetics. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, if that's able to support their games and it continues to make a good product even better with like free updates, like I, I like all the operators I've gotten through Rainbow Six Siege, which are like extra characters you have to earn like in-game credits to buy them to plays them. they have their own unique skill sets and whatever um that's free content for me and if other people want to buy microtransactions so that i can get free content fuck it go for it i don't care um any thoughts mesa yeah um uh you know this this whole this will do nothing but you know hopefully have a uh, overall increase in overall quality of the general games of the general AAA games you know whatever the next assassin's creed is if we ever do see another splinter cell um don't get my hopes up hopefully hopefully those things w w will be of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a higher tier because of this decision i th i think they could even just specifically benefit from just having more time in the oven Mm -hmm. Be smarter about not how much content, but what kind of content makes it in there. Because mm -hmm. uh, Valhalla has like way too much shit in him. Just like this isn't even good content. The game would be better if you just slimmed it down. Just just take some of the stuff out. But um, 
I, I think I think like yes, like ultimately this is probably going to be a good thing. Um, I know like some some people were concerned, just like oh, is this going back to the days where every company in the world was like uh, console gaming's dead, like mobile's the way to go. I don't think this is necessarily that. I think it's just re-strategizing and being a little bit smarter about how they approach things versus um, uh, spewing stuff out like three, four big games a year. Mm-hmm. How about you, Blaine? Any thoughts on Ubisoft and their insistence on not releasing a new uh, Splinter Cell or Rayman? <laughs> nah, um, I mean, I, there's not a lot for me to say without going a 3D off on Rayman. The, there was one. It was called Rayman Two. Um, I made another one. The Great Escape. Wait, was it? Is that wait, is that the subtitle for it? I think so. Rayman I mean, two. yeah, the Great Escape. It has a green cartridge on the N64. Without, without, it's hard to talk. It's hard for me to really say anything how I feel about this without mm-hmm. then going off on one of my many. I'll believe. I'll believe that things like microtransactions solely exist to support a game and benefit the customer when they people actually pay their employees and pay their taxes and. The video game industry is not a goddamn hell nightmare escape of both of, of abuse and of toxic work environments in general, as well as just people being paid way under what they should be. Um, that being said, uh, I guess I don't really care about um, whatever Ubisoft's doing with their with their plans. Um, I mean, if they're because if the whole thing is that they want to do less releases and more just work on the service angle of things, that doesn't really seem that different from what they've been doing. Um, Because what, like Siege and Division Two have been kind of their go-to's after almost every Ghost Recon has kind of gone belly up about a, I want to say, year after they've been released, Mm -hmm. at least in the last uh, two installments or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, That one mobile game that was just fucking the one that was literally like we're gonna make nt for the the, the bad guys but don't tell oh anybody. god i remember that <clears throat> so like i don't know like it's just it's hard for me to i'm not again i'm not obviously not you too but it's just it's hard for me to try to think of any positive side of this when i just i'm just kind of <clears throat> with ubisoft i mean again i play siege i ha- i've owned it for a while and i enjoy the game mm-hmm. but like I do think it's kind of weird now that, like, I used to be able to buy, like, the operator packs so I could get them all for, like, one price. Now, the only way you can do that is you can either buy the year five pass, which will give you the year five operators, but you have no access to the other uh, packs. You can Mm. buy them all at once with, with, like, a direct, I think it's, like, a button that, like, it's, like, oh, buy everyone for the exact amount of Rainbow Six credits that it would cost. But I also think that that's Rainbow Six credits, not a money amount. So that means that I would have Rainbow Six credits left over, which is again. Yeah, they the always get you with that shit. So like, ins- to yeah. like to get you to buy more. Exactly. So I mean, I bought a season pass, which again I know probably makes me a hypocrite with them, but like, I don't know. It, I just I don't I don't necessarily see this as a sign of oh well things could very well very much very well get better with them. I think things are probably going to stay the same. They're going to keep doing what they're doing. Maybe we'll see a little bit more content for these games, but I don't know. I would maybe rather actually see them commit to like releasing some, not just sit on the same things that have been making been making money mm-hmm. for however long. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why. Like the second you mentioned the um, the uh, the currency that you have to buy with, with money, the uh, rainbow points, whatever the fuck they're called, it just got me like thinking on this entire diatribe about fucking. Do you, do you remember Microsoft points in the 360 yep. era? Of course, yeah. It was like it was like some stupid fucking conversion it's, ratio. It's like ten dollars was like sixteen hundred points. At least, at least on the exactly. Wii, at least on the Wii, it was just one to one. You know, mm-hmm. with the, the shop credit, the Xbox. It was like was it eight eight hundred points was like five dollars or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, five or ten or so. I think sixteen hundred <laughs> was like ten. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> Why would they do that? Oh, there could be like 15 year olds listening right now that are just like, wait, what's a Microsoft point? <laughs> it's, uh, 
I mean, fuck, at least PlayStation was just, like, up front, just like, here, here's a $20 card. You get $20 to spend on our mm-hmm. fucking platform. Uh, apparently, yeah. I was wrong. There's a Wikipedia entry for Microsoft points. Uh, 800 was $10, so $1,600 was $10. $10. Oh, I was right the first time. Yeah. And then, and then yeah, they, like, like, yeah, with Wii Credit, it was, like, $20 is 20 points. Or, no, it was 2,000 points. Yeah. Oh, what, I was like, okay, is- I, my brain can wrap around that. Well, that's a, that's the difference between like actually like them having a currency that they want you to spend and like it being fair versus it essentially being casino mechanic. <laughs> a lot of those microtransaction currencies are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking don't of you, that, well, don't you want V bucks? <clears throat> you can get the Mandalorian skin. Don't get blocked. <laughs> um, and so they and, and to go back to Street Fighter Five for a second, Street uh, Capcom one one of, the, one of the cool things that they've done with Street Fighter is um, they actually have every year they have the, the the Capcom Cup Pack. It comes with two costumes and a stage, and part of those proceeds directly go to the prize pool for Capcom Cup. Oh, okay. So when you buy that DLC, you know you're directly adding money to whoever's gonna win that that you know check at the end of the year. Well, that's cool. I think that's really cool. Yeah, nice. that is pretty neat. Let's see. I know. I know. Uh, this next story, Sarah would have been very passionate about. Um, an anti-console scalping ban bill has been pushed forward in the UK by Parliament member Douglas Chapman. The bill, known as the Gaming Hardware uh, Automated Purchase and Resale Bill uh, for 2019-21, is aimed to ensure that consumers can purchase consoles at no more than the manufacturer's recommended price, and that resale of goods purchased by automatic bots be made illegal. Um. I don't, I don't know if there's like too much to say on here. I think we all widely agree that like, yeah, fuck scalpers, especially mm-hmm. ones using bots where you don't even have a fucking chance to mm-hmm. get a system. Though I would, I would like to take a, another look at that bill because I kind of don't trust these type of bills when it comes from like the UK. These type of bills usually have some. The US even. I mean the US, but I mean like. Well, for what it's worth, in well, the, um, in in the, the US, store, even. They wouldn't propose a bill like this in the U.S. because it, yeah. it was outwardly it was outwardly good. Um, um, this bill actually feel, benefits the common man. We can't put that in our legal system. <laughs> but it, it always feels like with the UK, with the UK stuff, there's always like it looks good, except if you think of it like this, then it actually ruins everything. So I like to double check that. But overall, I, I get it. Hmm though as somebody sitting with multiple things that a lot of people really tried hard to get um uh <laughs> <laughs> that ps5 story is a, is a goddamn legend though uh, for what it's worth story uh f- oh the me and mesa waiting outside yeah, of target yes. you and mesa going out yeah to I, w- PS5. I was thinking about it the other day and oh, i look, I look I would, and chuckle I, every time we we were so fucking anxiety ridden like if we had showed up like 10 minutes before before like those people took Mm -hmm. off like we just got in that like super specific window where they dipped and then we had claimed to be the first people there oh god especially towards the end of the night and the ladies were getting real pissed off at us Mm -hmm. it was a a, a small mom they have a way of getting what they want (laughs) i know mesa was uh Mesa was looking pretty down. I had to put on like a fake facade of like, I'm, I'm confident we're going to get this. Let, let me reassure you, buddy. We got this. We got this. But still, <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck, dude. I'm tired. I haven't eaten. I need to piss. This this is not good. If we don't get it, I'm going to go home and cry. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to be, you have to be ready to knock Karen out to get what you need. Yeah. Like, I, I just stood firm by like the facts of the situation. I wasn't trying to like get in anyone's face. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Um, go, go, going back to the bill, at least, um, the IGN reports uh, put forth that um, they don't actually expect the bill to go through. This is more I don't, I don't mean to use the word posturing in a negative light, but it's posturing to like get the idea into the um, public conscious, yeah. which I think is good at, at the least. Get it in the ether. Yeah. yeah. And because okay. like, like I think there's 
I think it might have been like Zombie Kills over on Twitter. Like she was saying that there is a benefit to scalping for like people are like look that are having a tough time economically, especially now with um with COVID and everything in the lockdown. So so if someone manages to get their hands on extra PS5 by like waiting in line at like one in the morning or whatever um like bills got to be paid like at the end of the day games aren't that fucking serious um someone pay, you know pay rent be able to put food on their table especially if they have kids i would say that takes uh, precedent but for like the people just using fucking bots online and super inflating the price that's that's fucked up i don't think there's really any real way to justify like that specifically i mean and i will say like i get i mean i i I agree with Zombie's um, perspective on that, if that is what she said. Um, I, I would have to look it up. I'm, that's probably paraphrasing, but yeah, 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 I, I but think it's I, to the well, extent of that. Well, then let me put it this way. I don't want to dis... Because I don't know if that's what she said, so I'm not going to just say that I disagree with her. Um, based on what you literally said to me, I mean, everybody wants to imagine a situation where it's like, yeah, it's just this poor, downtrodden person who's doing what they need to survive, like a Jean Valjean situation. <laughs> but... Think- most of the time, it I'm is. They're not dropping $500 to get most, lucky to get a PS5. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, when someone scalps a PS5 or, or a console in general or a game, they're doing it because they just want some extra money and they don't really give a shit. I mean, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. I'm not saying that there isn't someone out there that, like, bought a PS5, waited in line, and was like, man, I could actually flip this for, like, 100 more and feed myself and my family. I'm not saying that that person doesn't exist. I'm just doubting that that is, that is the more common version than it's usually shitheads online. Busting mm-hmm. the top. Yeah, um, I think I think with, like, the overwhelming majority of those cases, it comes like, a giant grain of salt. Yeah. Also, uh, just scalping in general is still shit. I, I'm sorry. Even if... Yeah. You, there's if, just... There's, there's no... There's no view of reality where you can come off the good guy. <laughs> yeah, it really isn't. I mean, unless you're like buying them with bots and you're giving them out for like half price, like if you're yeah, playing yeah. Robin Hood or some mm-hmm. shit. Okay, you know, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna toot my own horn for a second. I've always said to myself that like if I got to a point where I had like just mega disposable income, one of the things I would want to do is buy graded games that like have no reason to be graded like right like when i saw graded resident evil 2 for dreamcast or resident evil for sega saturn like i would want to buy these games at whatever the cost was crack them open and if i didn't want them for myself actually like sell them again on the market but for what they should be sold at not like fucking five thousand dollars for this game that nobody can even play because it's sealed in a plastic case like Mm -hmm whatever it is, like $200, $100, whatever the fair actual value would be. And just do that a bunch and, like, try to, like, de-inflate the game and collectors. Mm -hmm. Also, just because I love seeing people get really, really mad, like, why are you opening that collector's item? It's like, because I want to play it, dipshit. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. from, from the chat at least we have um, I think I'm pronouncing this right Alamino uh, says they, they purchased a scalped PS4 and they had no problem with it they wanted it and they were willing to pay the price um, but, which I previously responded with I'm glad that they're happy with the price for it that they're happy with their purchase um, but but so much in response to the availability to you know, like the overinflated price for the PS5 um, they bring up the points that um, and I think it's valid to an extent um, that it, it's just a matter to quote them. It's just a matter of letting the people at stockpile and try to sell them, uh, and wait for the supply to increase and they'll just be forced to sell for cheap. I, I think that'd be the ideal scenario where these people, um, oh, yeah. get shorted on their money. Cause mm. I, 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 yeah, yeah, whatever. Fuck those people. Um, but unfortunately I don't believe that's going to be the scenario where they are going to sell through their supply, especially with yeah. how, how, um, supplier strained, um, COVID has made everything. No, I mean, mm. you're right. The way it's all been going down, you're 100% right. Like, just like, just, you know just silicon, I mean. silicon in general has just been, 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 been hard to get this so far. So like, yeah, it's, it's, it's been rough. Join the, uh, join the target squad. Be there at like two in the morning. <laughs> no, it's, no, no, no. It sucks so bad. Well, you say silicone, you say silicone's hard to get. So I'm just sitting here like, listen, folks, 
we need your silicone. We need it. We don't have a way to get it. Go into your parents' room. Look at the box underneath the mattress. <laughs> send it in to, to insert a dress here. We will melt it down, and we will use it for whatever we're going to use it for. But please, please think of us. We need that silicone. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Watch a televangelist actually try that at some point now that I've just set it and put it in the ether. Oh, Absolutely. Let's see. Uh, Electronic Arts is set to hold a meeting this week to decide the fate of the ill-received and supported Anthem. While plans to overhaul the game were set in motion, project lead departures have severely hampered their developments. Uh, the current team behind the overhaul, internally known as Anthem Next, comprises of 30 individuals, which is a mere third of what sources cite is necessary to continually produce content. Uh, Anthem Next is slated to include core changes to the game's systems, interface, and mechanics. Um, I, I think this might be the vibe of the of the room. I don't give a flying fuck about Anthem. I think it's like the most generic, boring thing a company could have put out. But it has cool Iron Man flight mechanics. I think they're flying, yeah. Yeah. I like flying, all right? I've... I've, I've spent a lot of flying, but yeah, just if you if if you really think there's something to say, just make it like make literally make a new game called Anthem Next. Like, I just, I think they need a or I'm sorry, go ahead. I, was, I think I think just 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 to say like, hey, we tried. It's not working. Kill it and make it, make something new. I I think like it, it's like such a mediocre reception up front, and like no one has cared about. It. No one's really like stuck with it ever since then. It's uh, what is it's, it's that Mean Girls mean? Like, stop trying to make Anthem a thing. It's not going to be a thing. I think just like if you want to do a sequel, like just cut your losses, like and just dedicate to it versus mm -hmm. trying to do life support. That's not going to yield any results. Um, like like ultimately at the end at the end of the day, I hope that they make it better. I don't know why anyone would ever hope for it to be worse. But oh, I mean, EA is the company that fucking got rid of fucking Visceral Games. They got rid of Dead Space, and then they put so much money and funding behind something like this that's just such a mediocre product it's i i don't think i fully trust ea to make uh bigger decisions as to uh where they should where should they where they should be putting the resources and what studios to close and whatnot mm -hmm. um any thoughts boy <laughs> <laughs> Those are my I, I fuck. I fucking love you. <laughs> um, you I pretty much me. agree with y'all. I just care. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. When I said before, like, yeah, we, I wish Ubisoft be, would be pay taxes, but that goes doubly for EA. I, oh, yeah. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. I don't give a shit. And, uh, and I feel bad for like again. I feel bad for people that work on these games that do like. Like, like, let's be real. Anthem didn't get the way it is because someone was like, this is a great idea. It got the way it is because someone was like, well, here's our idea. And then executives went, how, how, can, how can we make some money off of these motherfuckers? These stupid motherfuckers. How can we make as much money as possible? <laughs> Please. I, Daddy needs a new double yacht. And that's, and that's I mean, I, I, again, I'm speaking in hyperbole, but I'm probably not. If, honestly, knowing how stupid some of these motherfuckers are. Um, yeah, I, I just don't care. I I, <laughs> I, I want to know what kind of fucking contract that um, what, what's what's the uh, studio head that was behind Infinity <laughs> War? And the, no, 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 oh, no, no, no. Sorry, no, that, that's Bioware. <laughs> my uh, brain, my the, brain went in a different direction. <laughs> <Go> on. <laughs> the uh, studio head that was responsible for um, the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare and then went to form Respawn. It was it was, was it Frank Zampella and. Know jason something i don't know i want to know whatever contract they fucking managed to negotiate with ea that like yes they did get screwed on titanfall 2's release because it was sandwiched between fucking battlefield one and uh whatever call of duty was that year i believe it was a infinity not infinity war fucking that's adventures <laughs> infinite warfare mm -hmm. um so, so they screwed You're them on that me, i think it's good to, good to control i get to control tony stark <laughs> and commit war crimes hell yeah it's a, they need a sokovia accords man that's it's uh go on i'm sorry um shit um fuck i lost my you so see yeah they, they've been sorry <laughs> They've been screwed on that front from EA, but aside from that, they seem to get like a giant amount of like creative leeway, especially on, uh, I think we did a story on here a couple weeks back where 
Uh, Respawn actively enforces like a no crunch policy for uh, Apex Legends. And like, so they've been slower on content rollouts, but they've just said like, yeah, no, we're not going to crunch. We refuse to do that. And for that to come from a studio that's owned by EA, they must have like a very uh, specific like like contract or something and and that Mm -hmm. that they have creative liberty and they also have the liberty to decide what working conditions are like. So isn't Apex also like the second most popular battle royale thing out there or is warzone good most because i know fortnite is like dominating still i mm-hmm. if it's not second i would imagine at least be third i think yeah. pubg's kind of fallen by the wayside mm-hmm. absolutely but uh apex is a hell of a game titanfall 2 is a hell of a game fucking uh jedi fallen order mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i have mm-hmm. it on game pass mm-hmm. i still need to play it it is so good get that double lightsaber early i'm gonna try i love and, well, I, like, um, I like dual fisting lightsabers more, but that's besides the point. <laughs> and uh, like so. uh, like Ramen Nomad, uh, m- one of my patrons on Patreon, thank you. Um, they they point out like, yeah, there's no Final Fantasy 14 uh, resurrection story for Anthem, mm-hmm. where I mean, and the fact that the final uh, Final Fantasy 14, uh, A Realm Reborn, was even a thing was like such a big su- substantial thing to come out of the gaming sphere. It, it's like a big. Um, What's the word I want to use? It's it's a redemption story that paid off like so fucking well, and I don't see EA having either. This isn't necessarily aimed towards, towards like any individual uh, developers or who, whatever leads whatever, but I don't see EA um, uh, fostering the kind of passion or resources that are necessary for something like that. So I don't see yeah. being competent enough to do it. Honestly, like mm-hmm. like like okay, look. Let's not beat around the bush. Square Enix sucks in a big way, but they also do at least know how to get games out. And like, I don't know, like I I have as much as I don't have that much faith in Square Enix these days for certain reasons. I I'm not going to sit here and pretend that there is incompetent something. They at least do seem to have like even if it's despite themselves, they do seem to have these strand out hits. Like they have the near series. They have um, final fantasy 14. Do I think it's big comp turnaround? Um, I believe it was Derek at SDGC that had pointed out um, the time frame of final fantasy 14's turnaround was three years. So it had already been, had been fucked for three years and then they turned it around into mm-hmm. un- undeniably the most popular MMO out there. Um, but again, like I don't, I don't see, I don't see EA and the management within the mm-hmm. within that company being competent enough to actually not only turn Anthem around but get it sustainable. I mean, like, like let's look at Destiny Two. Destiny Two launched and like you had like it was it was divisive as hell. People either really really loved it and were all about it and were seeing where it was going, or people were like, "This is a goddamn like train wreck." It's it's just microtransaction, microtransaction. I paid sixty dollars for almost half a game or a quarter of a game, um, and regardless of where you fell on that spectrum, they have more or less turned that around. Partially in part because they left Activision, but um, and the fact that like now there's still things that come up that like maybe people don't like and don't love, but that took them what? Now we're at like uh, when did Destiny I One came out twenty fourteen. So. Believe. So we're about six to seven years out from Destiny One's release, and they've they've now kind of turned it around, but it's still not guaranteed. I'm gonna be I'm not saying that like you know I'm not saying that like I'm shit. I'm not trying to shit on Destiny Two. I actually really like that game. I'm not shitting on any of the developers. I'm just trying to state object objectively like what I, th- the I think a is. lot of it comes down to like the business model that Activision had them on. It's like here's a very specific like release um yeah. or yearly release. Like here's DLC one, here's DLC two, here's the big expansion, here's the sequel. And so I I, get, I would assume that's the reason why Destiny Two even exists in the first place. Well, they yeah, wanted and- like a biannual uh, release, and they well, and yeah the- they managed to turn it around just because they're in control of it now. Yeah, and they they made the smart decision of okay, we we want to do we keep the microtransactions or do we just make the or do we take them away and stop and do we keep the microtransactions and make the game free, which is what they did, or do we keep the do we get rid of the microtransactions but still cost a premium? And mm-hmm. I think they made the right call on that. And again, I just I notice more competency out of Bungie as a company than I have with EA. So it, it's weird know. to me, like the. 
I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I just, I don't know, like, maybe because based on what you said about Respawn, like, if Respawn could get out from under EA, may, wait, I'm fucked up. Sorry. Bioware. If Bioware could, like, possibly get, like, maybe a thing that, like, like Respawn has, or, um, or, be, or go off on their own and basically be, or, or like an Obsidian, where, like, technically they're owned by Microsoft now, but, like, they're still pretty much doing whatever they want. Mm-hmm. They still have their own autonomy exactly like i would i would like to see a bioware that's able to do that but also i don't know how much of that incompetence is also in bioware itself because I, I don't know as much about bioware but maybe it's there. fundamentally not the same studio is like even, i know it's uh, not yeah i know it's not i just mean as far as competence i'm not even looking that's why when people are like oh no like, like that's why i don't give a shit about the mass effect re-release i'm sorry like i'm not trying to shit on it i just I, I don't really care about that series that much these days anyway. And also it's none of the same people making it. So I'm not like really even getting nostalgic for it. I, th- I think um, I, I'm not trying to like fucking swing fucking PC whatever around here. Like I don't give a fuck, but those games still look pretty damn good on PC. Um, and you'd barely need it even like semi decent, competent hardware to get them to run fucking beautifully. Yeah. No, they look fine. Um, so like, so like at, l- at least like my, um, not, not expectations like my my i don't even want to use the word hype but my like my hype for the legend collection is like oh yeah i look a little better but i mean would, i i'm surprised you didn't think it was too aspirational oh yeah <laughs> uh God, but um, I, you with that. Uh, I, for, I forgot one thing uh going back to square enix not even necessarily yeah. in regards to the whole um uh realm reborn stuff with final fantasy 14 the relaunch um, I, I feel like th- they, as a publisher, are more willing to at least let their, w- whether it's uh, developers that they own or if they're if publishing deals for other developers, whatever, they're more willing to do weird shit versus EA, where Absolutely. it's like very cut and dry, just like we need like this to appeal to like this very specific demographic and whatnot. Uh, Square Enix is at least willing to do weird shit, and that weird shit uh, allowed for something as crazy as A Realm Reborn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or that's why i brought up near like i i can't think of any major triple a western studio or even like any other japanese triple a uh, publisher not studio publisher is what i meant to say and i think about it like g- giving someone like yoko taro that much creative control and also just the teams that he works with making these they're so fucking weird like that I gotta give that to Square Enix at the very least. Like they, like you said, they do seem to give a little bit more of a freedom to the people developing shit. But they also have, they also have things like Dragon Quest to rely on. Literally the most popular RPG in the planet. Mm-hmm. How how is your Xbox uh, Game Pass version of that game going? It's good. Um, I got up to, I just broke out of uh, a dungeon, and I've met what who I I know is my first party member because he, he's on the box art and other stuff. For your mm. sake, I hope that there there's cross is. save because I know you're gonna cave and buy the Switch version. Oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, I play. I put it on Switch. I like. I, I would have in... already if I fucking had the money. <laughs> like I got everyone to a hundred. I beat the entire game. Got everyone to a hundred. I love that game. fantastic. Let's see. I'm loving Dragon it so Quest, far. Dragon Quest Eleven is. Wow, Everybody, perfect. this is now a Dragon Quest podcast. Hell yeah. I have Dragon, <laughs> I have Dragon Quest 8 like, right there. Let's go. I've never played the other... Well, no. I've played the mobile port of Dragon Quest mm. 1 that is on the Switch. Which is mm. fine. I know yeah. the graphics are not apparently great. Mm. But well, if, it, you like, if you like 11, then 8's the, 8 is its direct... Like, they went like, hey, let's make 8 again and made 11. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have never. And I know played ten a single... is like an MMO that never came out here. Yeah, it was on. It was on the Wii and Wii U. Yeah, I have yet to play a single Dragon Quest, and I'm assuming this might be a good jumping on point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, eight might. If you if you do go back to eight, there might be some quality of life stuff that feels weird just because it's old. But yeah, I would still recommend the uh, the PlayStation version over the 3DS or the mobile version of eight. Just because um, Tr- the PS, Mesa, I, my my will to bust out my 3ds is non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say the, the, the problem with it is that the only the as far as I'm aware, only the PS2 version has the fully orchestrated music as well as um the 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 the, the great voice acting. Really? 
Yes. Oh wait, so then which was the version that had the MIDI? Was that is that the 3DS and the PlayStation 1 version? No, 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 for for 8. Oh, wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So 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 for PS2, for the release of PS for the, for the PS2 version of Dragon Quest 8, at least the, mm-hmm. at least the western version. Um it has, you know, fully it's fully voice acted um and it has fully orchestrated music. If we're talking about Dragon Quest 11, the original release on PS4 and PC did not have it was was like mini music. The Switch was the first time the music was orchestrated. No, I know that. I, I, yeah, okay. th- I just remember this not starting with 11. This started all the way back with like fucking whatever Dragon Quest. Because like you'd have certain versions would have midis and certain versions mm-hmm. would have orchestral. And it would because of that shithead fucking Holocaust and I are motherfuckers. Yeah, we, yeah, I just, I just, I just, I just kind of. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I like, I take, I make, I take a mental note to like recognize it, and then I'm, and then I shut it out as I play the game. <laughs> I turned on, I turned on the MIDI version for like a second, just because I was like, I was curious. I was like, it's not that bad. Let me, let me check it out. And I tried it, and I was just like, I felt like I got thrown into a time machine to like 2006. Oh, it's visceral. It's visceral. It's, the difference it, is visceral. It slaps you in the face. It's like, wow. <laughs> wow, them horns, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dragon Quest State. Like, to the, like, to the point where... Um, wait, is it Dragon Quest Eight or Seven? I'm pretty sure it's Eight. Like to the point where the, later on in Eleven, you're going to be grouped with somebody else, and your number is Eleven and their number is Eight. Like, that's, like that's very, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Like it's very clear. Like they're saying, like this is this is essentially Eight too, and it's it's, it's great. I love I, I fucking love both of those games. Anyway, <laughs> Jose, Sorry. you said that you had a jumping off point. Sorry. Wait, did I? I'm pretty sure you did. Like, oh, I've never played Dragon Quest, but this seems like a good jumping off point. Oh, it's mm. a jumping on point. Like, I, like as oh, it'd be like my first a... entry into the series, I guess. Oh, I thought you were talking about, like, Segway. Oh, no, 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 no. But I'm my... assuming you have a Segway now. Oh, se- semi, somewhat. This is the smoothest Segway I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> Glad to hear um, that. Pedro Pascal, the star of The Mandalorian, has been cast to play the lead role of Joel in HBO's The Last of Us adaptation. Uh, likewise, Bella Ramsey, who portrayed Liana Mormont in the in the network's uh, Game of Thrones adaptation, has been cast as Ellie. And like, I I don't care about fucking adaptations. Like, uh, if it's a book to movie, fine, whatever. But I don't give a fuck about video game movies generally, especially since they've been so shit. And like so much of the inherent magic of video games is being able to control those characters and just it inherently makes you give a shit more when you're controlling the character. Uh, um, but the fact that they have these two actors specifically is a huge fucking plus for me. Like mm-hmm. uh, Pascal is a fucking amazing actor. Like in the very rare occasions he's had his like actual face on screen in the Mandalorian. But even in Game of Thrones, uh, he gave a. Uh, quite a sight to see uh, quite piercing one might say um and then bella ramsey who was uh for those that don't know uh, liana mormont was the um what's the word i'm gonna say yarl because i don't know the fucking name she was the head president whatever the fuck of uh a house yeah that, uh, a, a batterman house <laughs> to the, to the starts acting CEO. <laughs> she was she, she was like the fucking like 11 12 year old girl whatever that was that was in charge and she was a fucking badass uh uh and like what, whatever you want to say about like the last season game of thrones whatever that's not the actor's fucking fault uh but she was great in the role and i i think that's perfect fucking casting and i well i'm not gonna I don't want to say I don't give a shit about the adaptation, even though my little diatribe at the beginning. But I'll at the say very I least, I think it has talent. Go on. <laughs> um, if it allows more people to know about Joel and Ellie, then it's worth it. Yeah. Hopefully, it gets more eh. people to play games, whatever. It won't. No. I, I think the people that give a shit about Last of Us because it's a game already give a shit about it. Mm hmm. I mean, it's, I mean, like, I mean, I mean, like, people who can't play games, like my mom. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of apathetic. I mean, I, I guess to elaborate on what I assume Jose was getting at, but didn't maybe want to go fully into, like, I'm just kind of apathetic to a lot of adaptations these days. Not like, oh, you can't do a good one, but just like, 
I feel like unless you're like unless you're I don't really seem to care anymore unless you're doing an adaptation that is like actually interesting for someone who has experienced the property and is not just a retelling. Like I am more happy that Pedro Pascal is getting like good work that I know he's going to get paid for because that man's a brilliant fucking actor than I am like that a Last of Us adaptation is happening. When Last of Us is also like a like a movie game pretty much anyway. Or well, it's how Naughty Dog has always been very like tried to do the actual version of pushing cinema 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 cinematic cinematic gameplay i sorry i'm one sider i'm two siders in now i I think i'm like of two thoughts of it to to build off of one of your points about uh you don't care about adaptations like specifically if they're also like a one-to-one recreation like if it's going to be an adaptation from something i've already experienced like fuck it go wild make 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 some like crazy divergences because i don't want to just like if it's, if it's a game to a movie, I don't want a one to one because it's like I already experienced that. Can you like shake things up, do do some things different? Because otherwise, it's going to be a monotonous experience. Like even if it's in a different medium, but I I think there's a criticism some people have towards The Last of Us in general that they would say the story in The Last of Us isn't necessarily anything that hasn't already been done in cinema, and the fact that it stands out in games is because it's like the first. I, I'm it, not necessarily in my, my own beliefs, but I'm just going to air quote here. It's it's not it's so it, it's been done in movies, but it's the first great video game story. And, and so like the, the premise behind that would be that it's a it's a low bar. I don't necessarily agree with it, but. Um, fuck, where was I going with this? I have I no idea. Sorry. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. Like, like to me, the magic of the story, like, yes, even if it's been recreated in film before, not recreated, it's, it's been done in film before. I feel so much of the experience is actually playing it. And you can't get that if it's a movie. It, it You just will not give a shit as much. But like you said, like, um, uh, I think Mason said it like, yeah, like, uh, his mom's not going to play the game. So if this is the way that they can experience it, something that's a good experience, then yeah, I, I have yeah. no issue with that. I like, I like, I like when people do the whole, let's do our own story in the universe. I'm a big fan of mm-hmm. that and stuff. Cause I feel like that's, um, that's, um, my brain just came to a screeching halt. Um, yeah, that's, um, the safest way to do it without, like, pissing off fans who are like, you gotta get it exactly right, while also not, like, pissing people off like me who are just like, I don't want to see the same story a second time. Mm Mm-hmm. That's why I was kind of happy when, um, I think I saw, I I know you and me have talked about this, um, about this uh, manga before, uh, Gaunt's, like, with all its problematic stuff in there, um, the so I originally watched the first like little I think it's like ten episode anime they did. It was and yeah, so something go, like ten or twelve or something. Yeah, and then you go to the manga and it just like makes completely wild divergences. And obviously the manga was there before the anime. Yeah. It didn't finish before the anime started. No. That's why the anime went and did its own thing. Yeah, you're about to say it. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it's it's all good. Um, I mean. I guess I kind of experienced something like that before with Full Metal Alchemist, where yeah, like that first anime adaptation goes off in like a completely different direction because the mm-hmm. source material wasn't finished, and it's to good. With it. And yeah, uh, to the part I prefer, I think I prefer the ending of the original anime. Then I, the, I think the story overall is obviously better from the manga and the second anime, right? Mm-hmm. But I think I like the ending for the first one more. I think it's hard for me to even give a preference because they kind of go for two completely radically different things mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. The, the 2003 anime, I believe it's 2003. Yep, um, it goes for a much more like somber, serious tone. And uh, there's a lot of serious stuff in the manga adaptation slash brotherhood, whatever. Um, but they ultimately have two very different goals. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there, there's something about that 2003 fucking atmosphere um, that I fucking love. But like that, that's that's why like I will go back and watch a 2003 anime and go reread the manga or watch Brotherhood because they're two different things. I'm not just watching the same fucking thing, both like better um, animation. Mm-hmm. This is now a Full Metal Alchemist podcast. Oh yeah, 
Uh, I also I, I also like how the homunculus work in the original more than um, the, the 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 act the, the actual manga. Mm, I'm kind of split on that. I, I think there's like certain homunculuses, like th- some of them even like they both exist in the story very similarly, but they have different names. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's kind of a mixed bag. Like I think sloth in the in um in the 2003 anime is a lot better compared to the mm-hmm. to, compared to the manga, but there, there's kind of a lot of vice versa stuff also. Man, yeah. I'm crying. I'm trying to record a podcast. They're disagreeing, obviously. <laughs> she has strong feelings. Um, I, I, I just, don't know. If, I guess I, I just don't. To... I'm I'm sorry, personally, I guess I just don't like the the whole. Um, I don't like the whole. Oh, the whole secret plot aspect of it. I guess I just. I just. I much prefer this like band. To, this new band. The band together rather than secret plot. You know what I mean? What did you think of the movie? Um, it's, it's funny, but it's, it's not good, but like, um, the movie isn't good. Um, it's better than the, the second movie that they made. Um, and at least it does tie into, to the, the, the that story. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I don't know if I want to give like a wide endorsement on Gaunt's. I think it comes with a giant fucking mm-hmm. red flag of, content warnings and this um i I blank probably speak to it more about what the author's own beliefs and whatnot but i would say i widely enjoy it but know that there's a lot of stuff you should know before you go in and whether you can Mm -hmm. handle it Uh, this is now an anime podcast yeah hell yeah at least at least i was answering a message so i missed Mm -hmm. a lot of that sorry Oh and no least- problem. Just full metal and and gods mostly. Oh yeah. Um, I'm gonna guess what I'm gonna watch right after this. Hmm. At least with um with the uh, uh JoJo um shoot what's his name again? I, my name my head's blanking. Joseph Joestar. No, the the writer of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Is his name also JoJo? No. Yeah, I'm just gonna look it up. JoJo's bizarre, it's bizarre adventure. adventure. Hirohiko Araki. That's it. At least with Araki, he's very, he's very straightforward. He's a simple man. I uh, mean, there is that whole part too, like allying yourself with the Nazis, being like, he's an okay guy. Yeah. Well, you know, it's as he dies, so it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 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 um, um, but I'm very excited to see the internet's reaction to the next part. I'm very excited. I'm still waiting on the English dub because I I'm dumb and I enjoy the English mm-hmm. voices for JoJo. I think they're actually very, incredibly well voiced. Um, I haven't I haven't watched it since like partway through part four. Um, you got just quite because- a backlog. Yeah, that's because that's when I started reading it, and I just haven't gone back. That's, anyway. Mango's good. <laughs> um, in an interview with IGN, uh, Resident Evil Village's art director, Tama Nori uh, Takano, shed some light onto the origins of Lady Dimitrescu, otherwise simply known by countless horny fans as the Tall Lady. Uh, Takano notes her appearance stems from the early stages of the overall game being based on castles and vampires, although he elaborates that the team didn't want to be constrained by their traditional or contemporary depictions of vampires. Uh, instead, her design comes from, uh, quote, a 16th century Hungarian noblewoman and serial killer Elizabeth uh, Bathory, uh, the Japanese urban legend Hash. Hashaku uh, Sama and Angelica Houston's uh, Morticia Adams. So, if you want to point at any particular point for the weird, I, I don't want to say like femme fatale, but like horny killer, um, there, there you go. They went very out of their way to like not make a traditional vampire. Mm-hmm. And um, he even spoke on the, the tallness being, um, what, what, fuck, what's, I don't have the article right here. Um, it was a different one, but it, it's something uncanny about it where you're not used to women being that fucking tall. So having one that tall is 
and with all the other attributed uh, aspects kind of builds into like big horny energy. Plus, I think anything with Morticia Adams is, is just a plus. So, <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, thoughts, Blint? I know you're a fellow supporter of the tall lady. Um, I'm sorry. I I might actually have to get off here. Oh, no um, problem. We, I mean, we are talking about the tall lady, so getting off was, was, was very suiting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I actually didn't hear the first part of what you said, honestly. Oh no! Just just going into like some of the uh, origins for her design. Basically, being the uh, art director, didn't want to go off of traditional vampire design or contemporary. They kind of went for um, references from like um, from noble women to serial killers to uh, Morticia Adams stuff like that as their inspiration. No, that's good. Ex- that's good stuff. I definitely approve of that. That's that's all I got to say about that, more or less. I think everything related to the tall lady is uh, I, I, whenever I see anything re- regarding her, I just I just automatically tag Corey in it because I, I, I don't think it annoys him, but he brought it up like uh, just a singular time. Just like, why is the Internet so horny for her? that? I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going to tag you in everything now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Poor Corey has so much tall lady on his uh, on his time. God rest his soul. Um, you said you had to get going, boy. Yeah, I, I may have. Um, I didn't realize someone someone was was not busy that I thought was busy, and okay. I actually got to go take care of something. But y'all have a good rest of the podcast. Thanks for coming and listening, y'all. Um, do you want me to not disconnect? Like y'all um, usually. Oh no, you're fine. Up? We're not using webcams aside from myself. Okay, thank you, y'all. Bye bye. Okay. Now it is a dual cast. You, yeah. you have you have 50, 50, 50 power here. Yeah, it's, it's a regular podcast now. <laughs> it's a standard on podcast. Time, buddy. You, you have no idea how many times I don't even, I don't want to say like in the middle of the night, like in a sweat, whatever. But I miss our com our camaraderie we had when it was just the two of us mm-hmm. in the office. Those those are some fun times. Well, maybe fun's yeah. not the word, but I, I'm happy you were there. It made things so much better absolutely absolutely Uh, i think that might go ahead and be it for some of the news because i know uh our resident uh kingdom hearts appreciator uh Mm -hmm. sarah is not here so i know that she'd want to go off about this kingdom hearts new story um i I guess just to to simply put it for here and we won't elaborate uh kingdom hearts is coming to pc exclusively via the epic game store but we'll go ahead and get into the pricing now on the next episode I want, I w- I really, really hope that these are very bad ports. <laughs> you hope that they're bad ports? I hope Why? they're bad ports. It's better. The Earth is better. Humanity is a better place if these are bad ports. Why is that? Like, I want, like, you... Like, I want this to say, press controller button 14 to jump bad ports like oh no I, <laughs> <laughs> oh I, why do you I, do this? you're a madman like i i know like i've super like fallen out of love with um kingdom hearts like i think like, even as a kid i didn't like one because it was just clunky and it's like very oh, yeah. loose about where you have to go for the next cutscene to play like the whole the, fucking tar- the tarzan level sucks so fucking bad in kingdom mm-hmm. hearts one it is fucking mm-hmm. god awful um kingdom hearts 2 still plays well i don't care for like 90 percent of the story being fluff and i think that's basically my core criticism for it basically every game i mean three plays like a dream so there's that mm-hmm. um but yeah, I mean, people fucking love Kingdom Hearts, and I know there's a lot of PC only players that have missed out on the series basically since the PS2. If they haven't got anything past that, and this is the first time mm-hmm. it's going to be on PC platform, so uh, you yeah. can see Go- you can see Goofy quote unquote die in uh, 4K 144 frames per second. <laughs> so so if, if that's your thing. <laughs> Um, Raman Nomad points out that uh, that they didn't hear that it's a Epic Game Store exclusive, and I'm sure folks were very happy. Yeah, uh, gamers uh, right rise rose rose up a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, gamers gonna gamer like. Uh, you want to talk about Epic Game Store just in general? <laughs> I 
personally am fine with the Epic Game Store. It's just like it's just another place on my desktop to play a video game. And um and honestly, the fact that it also is significantly less intrusive than the other not Steams helps it a lot. Because, you know, with this, I log in, right? I press play, and then I'm playing the video game. Can't do that on Origin. Can't do that on Uplay. Can't do that on the Rockstar Launcher. Can't do that on none of them. None of them work as well as Steam in that regard. Just pressing start, and you're playing the game. Um, and the fact that, you know, coming up at Game Store basically ensures that this company's doing well for the game. I think it's a is a is a is a personal positive. Um, well, I think you touched on it right there. It's just I I don't blame developers big or small for launching hmm. either exclusive on Epic Games Store, or even if it's a timed exclusive, whatever, because they get a higher cut. It's it's Absolutely. not just Steam pocketing that money for I don't, I don't want to say for no reason because obviously they provide um, the platform to download games in a reliable manner, um, but whatever server costs, whatever whatever you want to put it down to. Um, yeah, I, I don't blame them for wanting a, a bigger cut. And like, as you said, uh, it's just another launcher. I use basically desktop shortcuts for almost everything. Mm-hmm. So I click on it. Like if it needs to log in real quick, it logs in. There you go. Playing the game. It doesn't matter. I think mm-hmm. my only real criticisms for the Epic game store come from, uh, apparently it still doesn't have a shopping cart, which is it weird. Doesn't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, here, here, I'll open it right now. But from my experience, like I, I'm just not in the swing of like, like, like every Tuesday I'll go on like my Switch, I'll go on my PlayStation on Steam, I will go ahead and um, look at the deals real quick. Like not even I'm not necessarily buying anything. Um, I just want to look at it. Mm. And uh, oh, it actually looks like Epic has added a deal section to their store. They did not have that for the longest time. So it's like mm. basically you go in there. And you, you have to like very specifically look for what you're interested in and, and buy it that way. So it wasn't, it wasn't very user-friendly. It looks a lot better now. It's not necessarily organized in any specific way, mm-hmm. but more competition is ultimately a good thing. And you should get games where they're cheapest and more convenient for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. But back in regards to kingdom hearts, um, I, I I don't want to say I'm done with series. Like I've played every single game, aside from whatever Remind DLC. Like I I'm just so done after three. Um. Uh. See, Glorious War says they haven't played three yet, and that they hope there's a PS5 version. Um. Did the, I don't know if they put out like a patch or doesn't it play at 60 FPS? Like at least on the Xbox One X. Uh, believe so. Huh. Believe so. They could add, add some more like bells and whistles for PS5. I would imagine that those bells mm-hmm. and whistles would at least be there for um the PC version, which would be cool. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. if you like Kingdom Hearts, it's unilaterally good news. I mean, even if you already have it, this is uh despite <laughs> Mace's best wishes, I would assume that the PC version is going to be. At the bare minimum, adequate and not a garbage fire. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think you elaborated on it. Why did you want it to have like to be so janky? It's like number just, eleven on the gamepad to jump. I just think that also, that's just a better outcome for humanity. I just think that the unit, <laughs> the, 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 the potential universes of where humanity can go, is just more positive in that direction. <laughs> oh God. Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts is a thing. I enjoy it. It's it's what's the closest analogy I could use? I love horror movies. There are a oh. lot of okay. No, I don't want to say that. I like the Saw series. It is an incredibly not smart series. There's a lot of dumb stuff in it and i still actively enjoy it i don't necessarily make this analogy to call kingdom hearts dumb i mean it's pretty dumb i I, you know what i think even the most ardent fans of kingdom hearts are willing to say like Mm -hmm. there there is some very okay no i take that back i don't think the most ardent of fans are willing to point out that like there's some real obtuse 
or or like BS stuff in there. But I think they're willing to to at least acknowledge that the series is what's what's the word I want to use? That it's just weird. Mm-hmm. It's dumb. Friend of the show. And con and free and then and, and, uh, common guest Sylvia Nexus said said it one way that completely clicked for me about Kingdom Hearts, and it was things that in more normal stories are metaphors are literal in Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. So. So like in something where like a character might confront himself and it's like a metaphor about like, you know, like him like, I don't know, looking into his past and something coming out of the bed. No, he's literally talking to himself and they can they treat it literally and the, there's no there's no there's no secondary uh <laughs> meaning behind it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You're a nobody. But it's uh it's a proper pronoun. It's got a capitalization mm-hmm. on it everything. Uh, before I forget, um, I want everyone here to check out Cloudy McDoom on Twitter, and you can find his links to his all, all his other stuff on there. He makes like the fucking most hilarious TikTok uh, Kingdom Hearts videos, and it ju- it has brought nothing but fucking smiles and joy into my life ever since I found his Twitter account. Hmm. Um, uh, R- Ramen Nomad says uh, sometimes you need something to smooth your brain out I absolutely fucking agree with that and if Kingdom Hearts is able to provide that like hell yeah you have a long day at work you just want to kick back and just have a, have a good time like fuck yeah I'm all for mm-hmm. that I think my go to game when I just want to zone out is probably what would it be I haven't had one in a while <laughs> maybe Resident Evil 4 I'm just like I don't know I just feel like playing a game Zone Atlas play this probably that or like a Mario game it's really fun to know everything about something and Kingdom Hearts offers that possibility to people you know I, I think the biggest thing for Kingdom Hearts for me is I have a giant amount of nostalgia wrapped up in it mm-hmm. it's just like I'm not even trying to go, go all fucking savvy like it reminds me of a time in my life where I did not have a job uh, not, not even a sense where it's like I, I was unemployed. I was a fucking kid. I, yeah, it was child. Fucking, two, it was fucking 2002 and then Kingdom Hearts 2 was 2005. It was a magical time to be playing a game that was doing all this fucking weird shit. Mm-hmm. And I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've I've beat Kingdom Hearts 2 specifically. Like, I would just like, yeah, it's the weekend. Let me see if I can beat the entirety of this game in a weekend. I would do it all the fucking time. Um I, I've got a lot of nostalgia. I got a love, a lot of love for that series. I think I'm probably mm. a little bit too critical on it out of anyone here, but it's because I still love it. Mm-hmm. I, it's uh, I guess we should probably move I, on. Yeah, we should. Probably <laughs> 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 you're, you're you're done. You don't want to talk about Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> just just, just kind of just talking in circles. Yeah. Uh, see I fucking knew I, I put this on Twitter I'm just like look you can talk about this on the fucking podcast but I know like regardless of Sarah is here or not we're gonna go off for 30 fucking minutes and I, I don't think it's been 30 minutes but we still did it we still went off for way longer than what I wrote I only wrote like what two sentences in here it's a special it's series it's a special series it's not even one sentence I just used a lot of commas it's one fucking sentence <laughs> Jesus Christ um, we'll talk about the should we just mention the pricing? We've already talked about it. And then they're all full on. price, aren't they? Yeah. So, um, well, they're full price games. So see, there's right? four, there's four separate downloadable titles. So, uh, 1.5 plus 2.5 remix is priced at $50. Uh, while 2.8, uh, kingdom hearts three plus. Hey, 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 full title. I'm not. No, no Full title. No, 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 no. Kingdom <laughs> hearts. 2.8 final chapter prologue. Jesus Christ. 2.8 <laughs> final chapter prologue. Uh, King <laughs> hearts three plus the remind DLC and uh, melody of memory. Each, those three are each priced at $60. So that's uh, what? 180, uh, $230 for the entire series on PC, mm-hmm. which I know some people were a bit in a, isn't the entirety of Kingdom Hearts on like PS4 for like a hundred dollars? 
I don't know. I, I know a lot of people were out saying like this is too much, but like I, I would have to look and like how often that goes on sale yeah. for for PS4. Mm-hmm. Um, but and honestly, I know the entire like, series like, is on Game Pass. Sorry. Oh shit! Nice for yeah, Xbox. Xbox. For Xbox, yeah. Um, that's that's probably the best value you're gonna get right there. But um, like like even looking at it, I'm just kind of like these are like long ass games. So I think I if if you want to go by like the dollar to uh, to hour ratio, you're still getting a damn good value even if you're paying for these full price. But um, skip Kingdom Hearts one. Skip the intro of Kingdom Hearts two. <laughs> No, 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 no. That intro is important. No, you can't skip the intro to Kingdom Hearts 2. No. There, there's some very tiny details that pay off later on in that story, but like having no, to it's play completely have, worth No, 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 no. It's having, completely having to play worth through it, it. Having to play through it is I it's hate it. It's like an hour. It's like no, an no, hour, no, no, 100 no, hour no, RPG. No. It, it is not an hour. It is like it's like what four or five hours, something like that, right? It's fine, all right. You gotta learn not. You gotta you gotta learn what Roxas is like, bro. You can't you can't just skip that. I'm gonna look it up right now. All right, it's two intro. Uh, according to Reddit, I don't know why this is the first thing. Uh, it's like three hours max. Oh wow, three hours is hundred hour RPG. This isn't like an official thing. It's it's literally just um. It's just some fucking dude on Reddit from five years ago. I would imagine this is from someone who's played the game so many fucking times. They know where to go to like grind out fucking money for the stupid beach trip. The fastest. It's fine. It's, it's fine. You got to You. It's 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 integral. It, it's integral that you play that, that intro is that intro is important. All right. You can't you can't skip that. All right. No, like the first time through, that's not a fun experience. It's like, oh, here's this cool fucking action RPG. I got to play with fucking Goofy and Donald. I'm doing all these anime fight scenes. I'm pressing triangle a lot. It's real cool. And it's it like, is. nah, do this for apparently a minimum of three hours. Yeah, and then you move and then you go back to doing cool stuff with the yeah, Donald and Goofy. You you buy your game, it's the weekend, you want to go. Your your mom only gives you like an hour a day to play games, and then you're doing this and you're like, what the fuck? This isn't the cool part. Uh, come on though, when you go to that mansion and you start seeing all the, the weird tech, come on, come on. Can it's we dope. Uh, it's awesome? Can we at least agree that the intro of Kingdom Hearts 2 is by far th- like, it, even if you want to do it in relativity, is it not the worst part of Kingdom Hearts 2? Now, it's been a while since I played Kingdom Hearts 2. But my brain is telling me, as someone who hasn't played that game since since I played it on PlayStation 2, um, that the Tron world wasn't great. It, at least in the Tron world. <laughs> You were doing stuff that wasn't fucking grinding on your skateboard. It was cool. There was a bike segment. There was a bike segment. It was was pretty dope. It was. Come on. It's important. It's important. The intro is important. Okay. If it was condensed to like an hour max, like if you just get those story details popping, like I know it's like the the fucking conceit behind it is like the fucking Truman Show finding out that you're like in a fake world. Like like, that that part's cool. It's it's, it's paced so poorly. It's a slice of life anime. And then and then it ends really quickly oh, oh, and then you're oh, good. Oh no no no! You know what? Here, Glorious War said in the chat uh, that they were confused as a teen, but they didn't play Chain of Memories. Uh, like like this is like this is the whole start of like the reason why I have like I don't, I don't for for like a proper word at the at the at this moment so I can get going. The the anger I had towards the series like they expect you to engage like every little piece of media for it. It's not even necessarily mm-hmm. on the same platform. You're playing PS2. You got Kingdom Hearts one. You're like oh mm-hmm. cool Kingdom Hearts two Kingdom came Hearts out. Two. All I have is a PS2. And then you're playing. You're like I don't know what the fuck's going on. And Square's like mm-hmm. sorry, you need to buy a Game Boy Advance. So you go to your mom. Can I have one? Nope. Okay. Yes, I'm fucked. Um, um, yeah, but like I feel like in hindsight, it's kind of cool though. So like it's cool because like it's right because like you're putting everything together and you're like you're like you're running around and grabbing it. like it's fun like, I think it's cool. I think it, <laughs> it, like in practice is a terrible stupid business idea it's an awful idea then there's but PSP cool. there's a 3ds there's a the phone stuff there's there's everything 
It's it's everywhere. Like it feels like, like someone forced Square at gunpoint to con- consolidate it to the to the collections. Dude, f- fucking uh, like yes, it is so beautiful. It's actually all in one space. Like fucking rip, fucking three whatever days over two for mm. being condensed. Like just cutscenes. Apparently, sixty five the- over two days. Yeah. Um, but Gosh, I, I mean, I'm, me and Sam were talking I'm about. I'm upset that I learned what that meant, and the title doesn't isn't stupid anymore. It isn't completely stupid anymore. Excuse me. It's still kind of stupid. It's still it's still kind of stupid, but it's not. But it actually makes sense, which is annoying. <laughs> um, Sarah and I were talking about the fucking uh, Halo novels and like how Halo Four didn't make that much sense if you ha- hadn't mm-hmm. read the novel because you don't know who the fuck the Didact is. And, like I'll stand by the argument that. Um, uh, relegating your story to other pieces of to, to other mediums should be complementary and not necessary. To be fair, and, I mean, to, yeah, but 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 like to be fair, like Kingdom Hearts, like yes, it's still within the realm of, of video games, but it's on different platforms, and mm. it's actively making you p- p- pay more. Like, let's say you only give a fuck about Kingdom Hearts, you have to go out and buy. A separate piece of hardware like re- regardless of how much a fucking game boy advance costs how much a psp a 3ds whatever that's still something outside of where the base um franchise stands uh let's see uh ramen nomad says uh, they don't remember which game but they have nightmares of the little mermaid world uh um, i believe it's only which one? one one and this two. is one and two I, I, I fucking hate underwater levels in general. Uh, and the one, especially in Kingdom Hearts 1, was really bad. It's really obtuse. Mm-hmm. It goes back to the fucking Tarzan level design of how I need to find uh, the random little zone in this map where to trigger the next cutscene before I mm-hmm. wander around to another random map. And like, there's this weird, like, water funnel puzzle where you have to, like, follow the torrent, but you need an upgrade so you can go past it so you can fight Ursula. And that boss battle is a fucking pain in the wiener. Um,. I mean, I, in I, I, Kingdom Hearts 2, it's a, it's, it's a rhythm game. It's a fucking sing-along. Yeah. I, I prefer that. to. I'll take that. You know what? At least it's optional in 2. I don't think you actually have to do it. Or maybe you don't have to do like the second run of it. I don't recall how the map works. I don't either. Huh. I, I also haven't played that game since PlayStation 2. I, so. I replayed it on PS4. I saw I started it and I was like, oh, yeah. That's right. This is how this game is. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> that was it. Uh, Glorious War says they don't. They didn't think the GBA game would be so integral to the story. I don't think anyone did. And like, it kind of mm. works in one sense where, at the end of Chain of Memories, Sora loses his memory. So you're kind of experiencing it from his point of view, where the, these are these details that are flying by you. Like, I don't understand this, and Sora doesn't understand it. So it's it's cool from that point. But you're still missing out on a lot of like the machinations that are like going on um, behind the scenes and whatnot. Um, let's see. Glorious War also says that Halo Four story is whack, and they can't believe they made John the Chosen One. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. 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 I would say. The, I think I there, there's like, so I much like the lore. There's so much lore in the books, and like, yeah, I wanted to read the Forerunner trilogy because it gives so much information on the didact who he is sure. and like even the iso didact and like i know way mm-hmm. too much fucking halo war ha- ha- halo lore um but man that four on trilogy is such a fucking boring ass read like i know like I'm, i kind of made my big resurgence back into books like a year or two back because uh, i i was an avid reader growing up and i kind of got out of it mac you are being so annoying come here you can hang out with me, cat. Um, but so, like, yeah, my, my patience for books isn't quite what it used to be when I was younger. But, man, the 400 books are such a fucking bore to go through. It's like a chore. And like, mm. But, like, those lore details are cool, but you have to dig so deep into the books for them. It's super unbalanced. Man, do you want to talk about what you've been playing, Mesa? <laughs> I fucking so, knew it. I fucking knew it. We, uh, we, we put Kingdom Hearts into the notes. We're gonna fucking talk about it for half And Sarah isn't even here. Um Jesus Christ. So um so what I've been playing. Um I've been playing a game called uh Subnautica Below Zero. 
Um, are you familiar once once you once you return to your chair? Are you familiar with Subnautica? Yes, you've been playing it for quite some time, at least for like the last year. But the first one it took it played it oh, for a little that, bit. Is this a sequel? So this is like a it's, it's, yeah, it basically feels like a sequel. Yeah, that. Um, so um, the cool thing about Subnautica, so Subnautica is a survive uh, underwater survival game, right? But unlike other survival games, you know, where a lot of it's like, you know, you build, you cut down, you punch a tree to make wood, and you, you, you're, you're con- it's just this um, constant random survival. So, Monica, the world is crafted, and it has a story that has, a, that has an end. So, you can beat, which I, I beat Sonatica a while ago. Um, nice. Nice. Um, and uh, and like once you beat it, like you're you're done. You know the, 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 the game's over. You can, <laughs> you can uninstall it now. Um, and so Subnautica um, Below Zero is um, doing a lot of the same stuff. A lot of the stuff I've been looking for in other places that I just haven't quite gotten. Um, uh, and so far, it's been it's been a lot of fun. It's very scary. The game's very scary. Um. I get, I get scared very easily. I, I, I scream very, very quick. I mean, I scream about a lot of stuff. Like if I, I like a car swerves in GTA, I scream, but I, I want scary. you to stream this to what I want to stream, to stream it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I can stream a little bit tonight if you want. Um, yeah. I, let me go ahead and set my thing to like automatically share, automatically share. Or we're going to share mm-hmm. on Twitter also. But yeah. Um, um, so yeah, that game, um, a, a, a lot of fun uncovering the story, uncovering the story, figuring out what happened and, 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 and learning more about what's going on is really fun. Um, oh, I also, um, I beat brotherhood. I beat Assassin's Creed brotherhood already. Did you like mainline it? Essentially. Yeah. Uh, well, I did buy. I did gentrify Rome, though. I did buy all the property. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you were assassinating was the economy. <laughs> <laughs> that game is still meh. It's still fantastic. Still love it. Still, still I, my favorite. I blame Brotherhood for getting me in that mind, like in that completionist mindset, where I have to clear everything on the map because I would, I would play the economy game before I even did like the main story missions. It's mm-hmm. so like not yeah. even halfway through, I owned like half a row. Yeah, because you, you just make so much money. Need that passive income? You don't even need it. You, you just need. You don't even like necessarily need like the um, yeah. the armor upgrades. Like the game's already easy enough. You just got f- mm-hmm. fucking counter yeah. and then murder thirty Wave dudes in one hit. Yeah. And so I've started um, uh, Black Flag on Switch. Nice, um, really fun. Still, I, it How starts does it perform fast. On there, it runs really well. It runs really, really well. Is it a it's, thirty or sixty? It's thirty. It is thirty, but like you know, it's. I mean, I played. I played it on. I played Assassin's Creed Four on um, Wii U. So this is just like. So like a, like a, I get oh I get to pull this out the house now so mm-hmm. let's see uh, glorious right. war asked for Assassin's mm-hmm. Creed rankings so oh I can I can do this really easy okay I I, Ready? I I need a list and then I'll go and put it together okay let me let me let me tell you mine while you do the list all right okay all right so number one Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and then. Directly under Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, fighting is Assassin's Creed 2 and Assassin's Creed 4. Mm-hmm. And then underneath that is the rest. Just the rest? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Do that. That's uh, all right. I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll, if you, if you find the, if you find, if you post a, um, a tier list, I'll make, um, I'll do a, a, a real list. But that's um, it's the, hey that's what my list is gonna look like basically. Here I, I'm just using the Wikipedia, so here let me, let me shoot this over to you. Um, Are you just using the Wikipedia? Okay. Yeah, just like releases. Uh, I'm almost done with mine. Mm-hmm. 
Spirits. I'm not. I'm not. I'm only sticking like really to the mainline ones, like the Chronicles, yeah. whatever. Uh, so, so obviously, whatever I haven't played, I'm not going to be putting in there. Mm-hmm. I've technically, I have played so much of this fucking series. Scout, what's wrong with me? Let's see. What's this? Let's see. Let's right, see. Let's I got see. my list. All right. What's your list? It should be the mainline ones. So the only ones I haven't played that are considered mainline would be. Um, actually, no, I have played every single mainline one, whatever spinoffs or DLCs, whatever. I haven't touched those. Mm-hmm. Um, so my list, uh, number one would be Brotherhood, uh, just because mm-hmm. it's such a perfect freaking game. Like all the mechanics are so tight mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and introduce the fucking multi kill fucking massacre <laughs> that you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, I put four after because other games have like built upon the ship mechanics, but like four was so centrally about the ship and it mm-hmm. still had like an improved, um, Im- improved mechanics from brotherhood after that would be syndicate because I do prefer my Assassin's Creed games to be based like in a central city, just going around. It has good stealth. I don't care about, um, fuck what, what's what's the dude's name you play as in there that that's not um fuck in i don't what? remember the the protagonist's name in what sorry oh oh, oh in uh syndicate uh in syndicate? Brother. oh um e- oh, i forget you're right yeah evie's brother that is his name honestly yeah. let's be I real about him evie's brother, but i like <laughs> the city real. it plays pretty mm-hmm. damn well on pc um, after that would be Odyssey, like out of the RPG ones. I think that's obviously the best. It's mm-hmm. a little bit, it's definitely bloated, but, um, I really like playing as Cassandra. She has a nice, um, ni- nice way that she interacts with the world, her attitude, uh, Malacca and whatnot. <laughs> um, like I, I felt very in tuned with, with the universe they built in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a good time with it. After that would be Valhalla. It's it makes some steps back from Odyssey. It's the development team behind Origins, so it's not, um, it's not the Odyssey guys getting like a second swing at it. Mm-hmm. After that would be Rogue, purely because of um, the premise behind it, where you're playing as a Templar. It was a nice change. So after that stupid. would, after that would be Unity, uh, post patch. I remember having a good enough time with it, even though the ending pissed me off where all your efforts are for nothing, where everyone's just like, oh, I don't know. I guess we didn't get the thing. Oh, well. Um, and like, I, I haven't played most of these games since like the year they came out. So like, in my mm-hmm. memories off, it's because I haven't played it in a while. Yeah. Uh, after that would be Origins, which is I blanked out on the story for like 95% of the time, but it plays pretty damn well. Uh, Revelations was I'm, this is probably lower than it deserves, but it was the first point where I looked and just like, oh no, Assassin's Creed is becoming annual. Like, there's not like a huge mm-hmm. important story here. Um, it was just basically more Brotherhood, but not as good. Mm-hmm. And then after that, was I feel really bad playing this low is two, and that's purely because in terms of, like pure mechanics and how it controls, it, it's just not there anymore. Like you've been playing the the remaster, would you agree with that or? Oh yeah, like, the first thing I noticed when I started playing two was, oh wow, I didn't realize how well they fixed the pathing by Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. But I think I think I think two's still up there. Two has a pretty damn good story and has the best protagonist, so M- maybe I should be putting that higher. Um, after that would be three. I don't really remember it too well. I like the hi- the Haytham section. Mm-hmm. Uh, where where, where Ro kind of fulfilled on that promise, I guess, of being a Templar, and then one is just the worst. Yeah, uh, I, I, haven't, I have not played that since fucking two thousand seven, whenever it came out. One, one. When I look at one, I I see like I see the blades from the original three sixty, like it's the social blades. Yeah, it's 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 old it's um maybe i'll pop i think i have it on you play i think i might just pop into it for shits and giggles maybe i'll do it for like a stream just like oh look at how old this is you know what actually no that's a bad idea the pc version's probably ass i i touched it on yeah because that was even back when um the whole ubisoft pc versions are terrible because they'll just get pirated era oh dude even um, assassin's creed 2 um you can't play it uh, with like an Xbox One controller, you have to use like a wired 360 controller, otherwise mm-hmm. it just won't recognize it. 
Yeah, I know. And these games are not meant to be played with like a mouse and keyboard. Like I, I would uh, say, like the, the RPG ones play pretty damn well with mouse and keyboard. Everything before that, pretty iffy. Uh, um, let's see. Yeah, that, that's my Assassin's Creed ranking. Um, let's see. Glorious War says that the, they were a diehard fan of uh, Assassin's Creed, but they have no interest in the RPG titles. I think that's pretty fair. I don't think they have like the same personality. I think I think Odyssey has a fair amount of personality, mm-hmm. um, particularly if you're playing as Cassandra. Yeah. Um, Assassin's Creed <laughs> Four and Brotherhood are triple S rank. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Ramen Nomad said Syndicate is pretty high up there for them. Uh, hashtag Justice for Evie. I'm going to use that in a in the post after after this. Fuck yeah. Um, All right. And Glorious War also says. Assassin's Creed 1 still has the most to say in terms of political and philosophical sense. That is more than likely absolutely true, but I haven't touched it since 2007, and I was... How old was I back then? Thir- Wait, no. Was I 13? I, I was a dumb brain 13-year-old. I, the, uh, any context of that probably went over my head. Yeah, I think so. I was 12. Since yeah, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> um, so yeah, so no, November thirteenth, two thousand seven. Oh yeah, so I got, I got my list now. I right, see. So, yeah, so Brotherhood. Probably, sorry, I was I was gonna say it's probably like two dollars on UPlay. Mm-hmm. Or you can play on an Xbox. You know what? I tried playing. I think Assassin's Creed Three uh, via backwards compatibility on Xbox. And like, so it's weird. Whenever you do a backwards compatibility game, it defaults to cloud saves versus like whatever emulation stuff. It, it defaults to the, like the 360 cloud saves. Mm-hmm. And I lost like my five hour save for Assassin's Creed Three, mm-hmm. um, just because I wanted to see like, oh, does this game still hold up? Is it bad or whatever? But yeah, I didn't get a shot because <laughs> deleted my shit. So I would maybe not recommend like that can be an isolated incident for backwards compatibility or even very specifically for Assassin's Creed three. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't reluctant to give us Asa- hmm. give an Assassin's Creed backwards compatible title another shot on Xbox. I mean, but if it's Assassin's Creed one, what did you really lose? I mean, what if you're like legitimately trying to like go through and like finish it? I guess, though, I would recommend against it. Anyway, so my list is yeah, yeah. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and then as I said before, two and Black Flag are right are next to each other. They're they're, they're tied in my opinion for two. Mm-hmm. Three is Unity. I actually really liked Unity. Uh, four is did I wait, did I put Unity twice? Let's see, I must have one second. Let me let me double check my list real quick because I must have accidentally. Uh, oh, I probably meant to put. Okay, I probably meant to put. No, okay, all right. I'll just um just count this one. Yeah, so yeah, so Assassin's Creed Unity after the tie between two and Black Flag, and then it's Assassin's Creed Three. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, um, I actually I really liked Connor. Um, I liked, I liked, I, I like, liked, I feel I, like Connor gets a bad rap, but yeah, I, like, I, 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 like, I haven't had the chance to go back to it. I like his story where it's basically, he's just lied to constantly and he's just like pissed at the end. He's just like, he's just fucking angry at the end. Cause he's just, no one, no one's been straight with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and after three is Odyssey. I think Odyssey is really, really fun. Uh, then rogue, um, then Revelations, then Origins, and then the original. You know what? I'm going to reinstall Odyssey. I'm going to reinstall all these, actually. I already have Brotherhood installed. Mm-hmm. My man, we just went on another Assassin's Creed nostalgia trip. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Um, Glorious War says assassination monologues were interesting in Assassin's Creed 1. Yes. Uh, I don't think it ever necessarily made like diegetic sense. Like you obviously stabbed the dude. He's dead. And yet you're somehow holding them on the ground while all those guards are just like uh, supposedly standing there. Let you talk to them. And I want to say that they they give context to that in one of the Assassin's Creed. I forget which. In Valhalla, I... I've got spoiled on some stuff, so I won't elaborate on it. 
I think in Black Flag they do. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, I, I want I, I want to elaborate on the stuff in Valhalla, but it goes much more in depth and into it. They don't mm-hmm. necessarily explain it right away, but I haven't finished it, so I can't say. But it's it's always been this weird like non. Like it's the animus, but like even outside of that, so it's supposed to be like the person you're playing as doing this. So it's mm-hmm. never made like diegetic sense. I want to say that's like the same thing. Like that's part of being a direct descendant of Adam and Eve, mm-hmm. which is I think which is where the eagle sense, eagle vision comes from. I believe right it was from being a direct descendant of Adam and Eve. Okay, slight a slight Odyssey. Sp- kind of spoiler the the mm-hmm. fal- not falcon the eagle whatever bird fucking thing you have fucking mm-hmm. uh whatever that, that you have uh that that's apparently a thing sent to you by a character who is related to the like ancient race whatever the fuck they're called yeah um how come none of the other assassins got those in the other games like this is like specifically a staple of the rpg series. rpgs you get a little birdie that gets to fly around and have fun i, I guess uh, it's useful from a gameplay point of view but it's also like solidified like even like in the plot mm-hmm. it's, not, it's like the super important like detail it's just like a nice little nod like oh yeah this bird you have the reason why it's so cool and useful and can scout out uh is because of this i don't know it's <sighs> Um, Glory Source says Assassin's Creed 3 had the most potential to be great. It was just so dull, uh, mm-hmm. but the kill animations were so cool. Yes, yeah. I remember that. It was it was the first yeah. Assassin's Creed game where you're not just using a, like a sword or dagger. You're using the um, using the axe, mm-hmm. and I think they they the do that. Yeah. They do that an, Yeah, they do it to an even greater um, effect in Valhalla. Like I like whether it's been like Skyrim or like other games. I like using a sword. I'm a basic bitch. Um, Same. But I don't like but using like maces and stuff. But using an axe in Valhalla just feels so freaking good. Maybe it's because like they upped on the gore or whatever, but it feels really satisfying. Like the rope dart. Remember the rope dart? Oh yeah, you like toss it and you can like what strangle dudes or it was remember you you're like you're like above them on like a like a thing and you throw the dart and then they they your counterweight to come down and they're hanging. They're hanging mm-hmm. from the rope dart. <sighs> That's so dope. The game was great. <laughs> uh, let's let's see. We're, we're a little bit over time. We should probably get wrapped yeah. up. Yeah, I played Mario 3D World. It's fun. I need to buy it, but I need to beat. Um, I don't know if I want to fully beat Hades. I think I already gave my thoughts on that before. It's just like I need to do another nine times. I might just turn on God mode to kind of speed up the process. That's fair. Um, I still need to beat uh, Sunshine and Galaxy because I'm stubborn. I didn't, play, I didn't go back to Galaxy. Actually, you know oh. what? My girlfriend, my girlfriend has moved in with me, so that might give me the justification to at least buy 3D World so we can play together. Mm-hmm. But we still need to play um, uh, Sackboy's Adventure, whatever it's mm-hmm. called. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't think I'll go into what I've been playing because it hasn't been too much. It's mainly been Valhalla. I've been playing some Resident Evil on stream. Um, I'll, I guess I'll elaborate on it later. Resident Evil 5 is a completely broken game if you're playing with a mouse. It, it is not even the, fundamentally not the same game. It is right. so fucking broken. Which we need uh, to return to. Yes. I, I don't even remember where I don't even remember where we left off. I'll have to look at our get to like chapter like there. four or five, right? Something like that. I think we went past like the water village or something. Mm. We we I think the last thing we did was the uh was uh, one of the um one of the turret sections last thing we did was the turret section oh where we're fighting irving then we and then you go to like those caves or whatever right yeah so we didn't do the caves where you're fighting the little uh progenitor little fucking spider mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. yeah i don't remember that so i think that's as yeah. far as we went all right but yeah i think that's gonna about do it thank you everyone for hanging out and chatting yeah big fun time yeah um, this little this little this little duology here it, this, this is a this, nice this is biologue sometimes it's nice to biologue i fucking hate you for that <laughs> 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 um, yeah so it, it's nice to have a big cast of people with very different opinions on here but man i gotta say i i, I love this one-on-one session with you mesa it's, it's a beautiful time yeah it was, it was fun mesa is, is indeed the best boy on the show Hmm. um i guess i'll go and do my little spiel um 
Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for hanging out. Um, just a quick shout out, I guess, at, at the top of the roll. Um, I just want to give a very big shout out to Rama Nomad and Sly for being my first two patrons on Patreon. Um, hey. I have I have that going. It's it's mainly just there to help fund the um, the hosting service for the podcast. I think it's like twenty dollars a month. I have, I have whatever the lower plan is, just because we don't get like tens of thousands of views, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's mainly to fund that, and then however it becomes sustainable whatever to help fund everyone everyone else that comes on the show toss people something um uh yeah you can find all of our content at least all my content in the description below uh the podcast here is done on sundays at 6 30 p.m pst you can find it later on podcast services and youtube with cut up sections on youtube for easier digestion uh, my stream on twitch kind of randomly but if you follow me on twitter you can um stay up to date with everything i'm doing all my shenanigans all my puns uh so i'll just kind of like let people know ahead of time like when i'm planning on streaming uh, what game we're doing uh currently on a resident evil uh binge so the next game i'm going to be streaming is resident evil 3 um i think that about does it for me uh mason yeah um you can you can um you can find me at um, uh, video game rem all over the place or remless. I think on Twitch I'm remless TV right now. It's it's a whole thing. Um, uh, yeah, I don't post as much as I want to, though. Things are starting to get to the point where I might start being able to do more online, which I'm very excited about. Um, so uh yeah but if you can follow me on twitter um what it, uh at underscore remless i just remembered what my twitter was don't worry about it um, <laughs> um uh yeah and um uh i i i i don't tweet much but what 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 i tweet and what i like and what i retweet i consider prime i consider a a a full sorry class all right so it's 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 it's, it's a competitive place to get to get a heart from me it's all the more impactful when you do Uh, yeah nice um Mm -hmm. i i guess i guess Mm -hmm. my one closing note would be um full metal alchemist is good and you should watch slash read both versions of it absolutely um but and before before we before we um end the stream oh and i just saw what you did <laughs> <laughs> uh rem has uh, sent me a gift via steam uh known mm-hmm. as street fighter 5 so we let's 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 do it one day i i am accepting the gift as we speak i will download it right now <laughs> should i should I put it on my SSD or my my regular boy? Uh, it doesn't matter too much, honestly. I'll put on my regular. All right, but yeah, that's gonna go ahead and do it. Thank you for that, Mesa. Nope. I'm looking forward to getting my ass kicked. <laughs> All right, all right. See you guys. Uh, see see you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Also, bye bye. Bye bye.